So what is the subject? Well, the subject is reclaiming dominion. And what I'm here to do is to um, bust the fictions. And the three big fictions have to do with law, religion and science. They're all controlled by certain entities on this planet, very powerful entities. And uh, the science that you get from, uh, <clears throat> from the universities, consensus science, is uh, mostly all erroneous when it deals with uh, the universe. So I'm going to bust a few fictions there because we really need to know how the solar system works to be able to reclaim dominion and be free. Law, right? We think we could go to the magistrates to, to get justice. Well, no, you're getting a service. It's a service. It's an adjudication service. You could liken it to uh, your neighbours having a fight. So the husband's fighting with his wife and you turn up at the door and you knock and you say, look, I've come in here to, to help you with your, your argument. I heard you screaming and uh, I can adjudicate for you. And the guy turns around, looks at you and says, nah, piss off. I'll settle this in my house. I mean, he doesn't need your service, right? That's what the, the, the justice system is doing. They're providing a service. And we need to stand up in dominion and uh, tell them that we don't need those services. Okay? And uh, we can uh, <coughs> do the Magna Carta thing, which is ask for a jury, because that's your right. That's our right. Religion. That's the big one. That's the big one. Once upon a time on this planet, and this can be proved, this is known by people who read other literature other than church literature, there was peace and there was one religion on this earth. And it was based on the cycles and the phenomena of nature. Simple, simple as that. The characters were all the same. They honoured the moving orbs in the sky, which were called the wanderers. The Greeks called them the wanderers. The Jews called them Elohim. The Elohim. Let us make man in our image. Um, the, they, they have been called by various names. The Cosmocrators, the Demiurge. Now, they are the characters that always turn up in our holy scriptures. And yet Catholicism and Christianity came along at a certain period of time, very conveniently in the Piscean Age, because that is the Iron Age, where humanity has lost their consciousness. See, this is why we, we need to reclaim our dominion, because there's a download of consciousness coming and an awakening that's, a, that's occurring that if we miss out on it and don't reclaim our dominion, the prodigal son don't turn back to his daddy in the heavens. And the prodigal son is us. We're the ones that have come into this solar system, incarnated here. Here we are. We're all here together on this third rock from the sun, flying around through heavens. How does it happen? How does it, do our souls transmigrate? Well, this is the story that is in these mythologies. If we understand this great and illustrious book, the Holy Bible, what the Jews and the Christians call the Holy Bible, and believe you me, we need to reclaim this book because it's brilliant. It is the best Shakespearean stuff on the planet. And I've proven it with my astrotheology videos. I've shown who the characters are. Abraham, Abraham, Jesus, Moses, David. They're the planets in the solar system. They are the heroes. And they wander around the seven orbs, the two luminaries, the sun and the moon, and then the, the five... Uh, uh, visible planets, visible to the human eye. Of course, Uranus and Neptune and Pluto are not. So Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Venus and Mercury, we see them. And we see Mercury's going around quickly, 88 days. We notice Venus does 225 days. Mars, uh, 687 days. Then we see Jupiter, 12 years. Saturn, 29 and a half years. And we see this. And they're the wanderers. And they Go through the signs of the, the zodiac, Virgo. Saturn is in Virgo right now, actually. If you look out at it at 9 o'clock to the west, you will see the Virgin going down. Interesting, because we're in the sign of the Virgin. It's September the 4th, and we are right in the heart of the Virgin. So the Virgin is still there. Isn't the sun supposed to be in the Virgin? I'm going to explain this. 
why it's not in the Virgin. It's actually in Leo, the next sign down, because of processional slippage, which I shall explain. But these are the things we don't get. We don't get in our institutions, certainly not in church. They won't tell you what this book's all about. But um, <coughs> this book has been busted. This is a book from the 1830s, the Reverend Robert Taylor. In here, you will find the best astrotheology. He went to jail twice in England for publishing this book. And he exposed. He's done an enormous amount of research, absolutely exposed the church buffoons that are teaching the literal Roman cult version which is based on a historical figure which is the whole underpinning structure of all the fictions and this is what I'm here to expose that the whole lot of it the law everything that is backward in this world in the Western world goes right back to a historical Christ and that is where we've gone astray because I'm going to show that the Christ that came in the flesh is the consciousness that mankind possesses. So there's no denying that Christ came in the flesh, he did. There's the flesh and your consciousness that you're enjoying in which you're able to commun communicate with one another is the Christ consciousness. It came. And the second coming is a higher dose of this as we go from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius, we go from mutable water to fixed air. Air, last time I checked, is spirit, the Holy Spirit. So earthly bodies, hexahedron, that's the hex, the square. That's a symbol for the molecule. See, these are the platonic solids, the five platonic or Pythagorean solids, and these are the the five elements or the four platonic elements, earth, water, air and fire, which come from the cause, the ether. Now this is the science that underpins the whole story of how our souls came to this solar system. This is the science because we are, we are made of these things. You see, we are solid, liquid, gas and light, photon, particle, atom, molecule. That's what we're made of. So the soul which comes from here, from unconditioned consciousness, the firstborn of the ether is the fires in the sky, electricity. Walter Russell, are we familiar with Walter Russell? Great genius, please. I'm gonna be using this book a bit today because we're gonna bust the science, right? This guy busted the science. He debunked Newton and his gravity and, and whatever theories. He debunked them. Totally out and out debunked it. But they're still teaching it in the university, in the universities. And people are graduating on all this false science. He says, electricity is the only force which God makes use of to create this universe. Ooh, well that's what, uh, Scientists like uh, Wallace Thornhill are teaching at uh, Thunderbolt's project. And you can check this out on, on, on the internet. Wallace Thornhill is an Australian scientist and he's teaching about the electric universe, plasma cosmology. But consensus scientists just doesn't get with the, doesn't get with the times. And they're controlled again by Rome. Okay, so Rome is controlling all of this. Now, I'm probably going to be starting with the law. All right, we're going to bust the law. And um, no need to write this down. As I said, I'll have DVDs so you can, uh, you can uh, get this information. Okay, so, but that's um, my website. Um, and this is Franco Collins. And there's a, this is another good website. But um, apart from these websites, I'm going to be recommending, if you want to research the law stuff, Dean Clifford. Okay? Punch in YouTube the name Dean Clifford. And he's in Canada. And he is the best guy you want to be studying and listening to right now. Right now, if you want to reclaim dominion and you want to bust the fictions 
in law. Okay? Now, the Catholic Church, the Roman cult, controls everything that happens in, in, in your uh, court, courtrooms. Okay? Everything. The whole lot. The magistrates wear black because they are priests. They are ecclesiasticals. They are ordinaries. An ordinary is an officer of the church who, by reason of office, has ordinary power to execute the church's laws. So these people are working for the Inquisition. And I'm going to show how they set this system up, okay, uh, via a, a, a system of trusts. Now, <clears throat> the trusts are, the first trust was in 1302 and Boniface, Boniface the, uh, was he the eighth now? Anyway, the, that, that papal bull is Unum Sanctum, okay? Um, he set up this trust, this papal bull, and then there were three subsequent trusts that were, that derived their power from this one. Unum Sanctum tells you that everything on this planet belongs to the Catholic Church, okay? You too. That's the presumption, because that's their claim of right. You see, we don't have papal bulls, do we? Uh, anyone hand up if you've got a papal bull where you've cursed the whole world and, and claimed to possess the... Does anyone do that sort of shit? No. They do. And they've done it. And these are, these are the trusts. 1455. Romanus Pontifex, 1455. 1481, Attorney Regis. Notice the date, 11 years before Christopher Columbus took off with three boats full of uh, well, conquerors, conquistadores, they went to conquer a land which did not belong to them, but they were blessed by Rome. And when he came back in the year uh, 1493, he signed the Treaty of Tesadillos, which gave them the whole of the Americas to the Columbus family. That's not the true name, by the way, Christopher. Last time I checked, mean, uh, means bearer of Christ, and Columbus is the holy dove. So he went with the blessing of the Catholic Church. So that family, the Columbus family, 12 years after this date, and I'll show you why, why this is very important, because this is, this is the property that they've stolen off us. And um, the, so they split it up between the Columbus families, the elite families, and the Vatican Church families, because the elites own the biggest corporation on the planet, which is the Vatican. Right? They deal in... Well, it, it, it's a business. And the, the most uh, profitable business that they deal in is war, people trafficking, enslaving countries, conquering countries, making fictional money, Federal Reserve money, they're in bed with the banks, they're in, in bed with the Rothschilds, in fact uh, one of the six founding dynasty sons of Rothschild, Amschel Rothschild, went down to Naples and begun a long history of looking after Vatican money since 1823 and that was Carlo down in Naples. And you see the famous picture where Rothschild is kissing the, the Pope and, and, and he's like, whoa, we're going to do business, man. <laughs> this is uh, history. We are going to do business. And in fact, in France, they called the two Rothschild brothers, Nathan and James, Nathan in England and James in France, they called them the Demon Brothers and they were, they were about to lynch them. But they were spared and they have been spared many times over this family, and they're still out there murdering and killing and plundering and medicating us 
and poisoning us and indoctrinating us and pumping millions of dollars into their corporate churches, mostly Christian. Now, I'm not going to attack Christianity. There's some good Christian churches out there that are not corporatized. They're not corporations. Good in terms of, well, you know, they're not corporations doing business because, duh, corporation is business. The Watchtower and Bible Tract Society incorporated and they've got a board and, 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 and uh, members uh, and, and um, uh, shareholders. Every corporation has shareholders. You're the single sole shareholder of your corporation, your, your registered birth name. You're the, you're the shareholder of that, the beneficiary and the executor, the general executor. And this is what I'm going to show you, that we need to claim, reclaim that position. So when you go into court, you just rock up and you say, hey, Mr. Judge Boy, I happen to be the general executor of this account. And uh, by whose authority do you use that name as personal identification? So uh, I'm going to appoint you trustee and you just dissolve this case. Bye-bye. Business is done and get out there. Get out of there. And this is what we have, to, we have to do. We just have to do it to restore, to restore justice and law to the world. And it's a coming. 1537, convocation. Okay, now I've gone into this. I've got a video on YouTube about the law. I've gone into this in more detail. I'm not going to go too much into that. These are the trusts, okay? This takes away your um, real property. This takes away your personal property. This takes away your soul. You've all been baptised into the Catholic Church. You have, all of you. You got a birth certificate? That's your baptism. That is your baptism. You see, it's a ritual. They perform this ritual in our hospitals. Because hospitals are military facilities. Since 1931, or at least in the 18, 1870s, with Abraham Lincoln's efforts and the banksters. But we are born in wards. You are wards of the state. In their eyes, this is their presumptions. This is their presumptions. And unless you rebut those presumptions, they stand. That's why they can get little young 18-year-old boys that come to court and they're trembling and nervous because they, they, they didn't have a license or they, they were speeding or something like that. And they get taken into court and people are being jailed for not paying Citilink. This is how they can do this. They can get away with it. Because people aren't saying, hey, hang on a minute here now. Hang on a minute. I am the sole beneficiary and shareholder of my corporation. And I'm going to tell you, Mr. Public Servant, what's for. You're not going to tell me. And I do not consent to your jurisdiction. Or I do not consent to go into one of your warehouses because we're just property, chattel. So they can warehouse us in prisons. They can do that if you don't know who you are. You see, this is what the whole thing of, of law, religion and science is. We have to bust the three big ones. And the law must be dealt with. We, we've got to deal, deal with this aspect of their presumptions. Get into Dean Clifford, where he teaches all this. I probably only know one hundredth of what he knows. You've got to go to him. Believe me, he's got the latest information. And he's got interviews out there that you can listen to, and they're great. And believe you me, you listen to three or four hours of Dean Clifford, you're ready to rock and roll with this Dominion stuff. And you really will understand who you are. Right? We don't need, as sovereigns, to, to uh, consent to their services. A bit like the Mafia, you know, when the Mafia comes a-calling, you can rest assured they've got a service for you. 
Yeah. And you might want to, I don't know how you, you, you deal with that because my family come from southern Italy, Italy, Calabria, where the mafia is called Andrangata, and uh, they've killed people who have resisted them. And believe you me, that mafia there goes right back to the Vatican. You can see it in the, in the movie um, The Godfather. That's not fiction, that's true what they're telling you there. It all goes back to the Vatican. The Vatican controls the lot of it. The cardinals are the greatest, most evil sorcerers in the universe. And they're about, they are about to be dealt some justice. And we're going to see it with our own eyes. And possibly those FEMA concentration camps that they've built will house a bunch of these types, a bunch of these elite types. Unfortunately, it, you know, it, it's not um, something that you want to dwell on because it's better to dwell on positive things, but um, the camps are there and the elites are still around and uh, we know that uh, they have been certainly poisoning us in many ways, especially in the mind with lies. And that's what we're here to, uh, to uh, address. So how do you get past the presumption of separation of church and state? Like the, the big public story is that church and state are no longer actually working together and there's big separation. Yet obviously by all this information, it is still run by the church and all states are run by church. So how do we get past that lie and throw that back into their face? Well, we have to identify what the Vatican, we, we, we really have to uh, reveal what the Vatican is. It's a corporation. Okay. It's corporatism. So it doesn't matter what arm of the Vatican, whether it's the banksters, because they, they're in bed with each other, the Jesuits, the Club of Rome, the Knights of Malta, and all these buffoons. But they have a zombie army that just does what they want them to do. I mean, yeah, because there's money. There's money. The people, look, unevolved people will do anything for a paycheck. They'll do anything. You want me to kill my mother? Sure, man. Ten bucks? Oh, lovely. Bernanke types, you know? George Bush types. We're going to bring democracy to rack. Yeah, because first of all, George Bush and his family, the murderers of JFK and John Lennon, um, they're going to bring their democracy, their mob rule, to Iraq. Of course they are, because Halliburton, Blackwater and all their corporations are in there doing business with the Iraqis. But they also had a system of law that was different to Catholic as well, didn't they? The Iraqis, Iranians, Chinese. Yes. They're all separate models. Yes. Yes, absolutely. That's why the war in Vietnam happened and Korea and everything like that, because it's the Vatican re-establishing re and asserting its, its power in, in the Far East, in the Americas, wherever it goes, with the, uh, the UN and with the elite corporations, the trilateralists, the Bilderbergers, the Council on Foreign Relations. It's all rigged. The market, it's all rigged, everything's rigged, and we, gotta, we need to bust, bust it, bust it open by standing up and reclaiming our dominion. That's what the prodigal son's about. Are you all familiar with the prodigal son? It's a beautiful parable, it's in the Bible, right? I've got the New Jerusalem version here. Um, and it's in, it's in Luke. And the reason why I love it is because when you understand it correctly, um, you, know, you know who it's relating to. It's relating to us. We're the prodigal son. You see, we, we, we go uh, away from our, our causal, unconditioned consciousness. That's how good we are. I'm not preaching to the, I'm, I'm preaching to the converted here. I oh, know you, 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 you people have got an idea of this at different levels, that how divine you really are. I don't have to convert you, you know, I don't have to scream at you, please, see it. You see it, you know it. And, and, and we're, we're starting, we, we are more understanding the fact that we are more spiritual than we are physical. And what is physical? It's motion, everything you see that appears to be hard and, and, and solid is just motion. 
There's no substances. We'll get back to the prodigal son. I won't read it, in, in fact, but I'll, I'm just going to explain what the story, what, how the story goes. But before I do, let's just um, see what Walter Russell has to say about uh, matter and substances, okay, the physical world. The scientist has not only divided matter into 92 different kinds of substances, but he has divided these 92 substances into atomic systems made up of many more minute particles of somewhere around 20 primal substances. These he calls electrons, protons, neutrons, antineutrons, antiprotons, photons, gravitons, mesons, kappa mesons, positive mu mesons, negative mu mesons, positive pi mesons, negative pi mesons, neutral pi mesons, tau mesons, positive V particles, negative V particles, neutral V particles, and so on. Without an end as yet in sight of the many non-existent substances. They don't exist. They so convincingly act their parts in producing the mirages of substance in this universe that the greatest scientists of this world have not the slightest suspicion that the many different substances of matter are but different states of motion. Now, you're not going to learn that in the universities when you get your degrees. Uh, the prodigal son is us. There's a story in the Bible where there are two sons and they are both children of a very rich man. And they decide that they're going to, uh, or one of them does anyway, he decides that he's going to venture off down into the world like Narcissus. He went down, down, down and he saw that he was good looking and so he fell in love with himself. And this is what we do. We fall in love with this material world and all its pleasures and enticements. We go out there and we get a bit of pain and we get a bit of pleasure. Then we had enough of pain so we go back to pleasure. And we don't realise that they're one and the same thing. And then when we work out that pleasure is pain and pain is pleasure, then we start thinking about joy and bliss. You see, the prodigal son, he went down and he slept with the prostitutes and he drank wine with his hooligan friends and everything and squandered all his riches. And then he saw, my God, this is vanity. I've come to my senses. I see a, a bigger picture here. I'm coming back to my father because it was much better there. I mean, the food that he gives to his pigs is better than the food I'm eating. So he goes right back to his daddy. When we're out of here, <laughs> when we're sick of the suffering and the illusion and the, and the, and the material enticements, like... Is, the world is so profane, there's adver advertisements to buy this. And you've got this sleazy woman, half naked, advertising all sorts of products. Buy this and consume that and here's some money. Come on, get out there and consume as much as you can. That's what these buffoons have created, a world of materialism. Because they are materialists. They're not spiritualists. They're not into spirituality. They pretend to be. So the prodigal son... He goes back to his father and his brother sees him coming up, to, up the drive and, up, and, and, um, and the father greets him and kisses him tenderly and says, my son, you've come back, you've come back. Quickly, he says to the servants, get a cow, let's have a feast, let's celebrate this evening. And the brother that stayed with the father up there in heaven, he turns around and says to his father, he says, uh, what are you doing? You know, I've been with you for so many years, you've never done this for me. And the father says, well, he has returned. You know the story of the lost sheep, where the Lord goes out and looks for that one lost sheep? That's what it's talking about. It's us making our return, consciously awakening to our spirituality. And that's why we're here today, to learn more about this. There's no one here. Is there anyone here that knows everything? Oh, I don't know everything about anything. But I'm sharing what my studies have, have produced about this subject and this can help us to reclaim dominion once we know who we are. That we are everything that ever was, everything that is and everything that will be, as David Icke puts it. And the solutions are here, they're here. I'm going to share those with you. So, um, 
Um, <clears throat> all of this system is run on the, uh, on the presumption of your being uh, lost at sea. See, they have these trusts and they administer these trusts for you. Unless you write to the Attorney General and tell him, uh, excuse me, uh, I've come of age and I'm going to uh, be the General Executor from now on. You just step aside, buddy. That's my job. And then you're, you're, in terms of law, your life is back in control. You're in the control seat with the steering wheel in your hands and not these buffoons. Because they will. Is that the Red Sea that you're talking about? That you go on in Know Thyself as well? Lost at Sea, the Admiralty Law, is that all related to Yeah, yeah pretty much. The Holy Sea. Why do they have a Holy Sea? Because they, they are looking after the Lord's affairs here on earth. Because the Apostle Peter was given the keys of the kingdom by Jesus. So back in uh, 325, with Constantine, the murderer, um, he established the Church of Peter, St. Peter. So you pay Peter, don't you? Right? The Peter's pence. And that is the system of tax. And then they put words in Jesus' mouth where he says, Oh, give unto Caesar what's Caesar's and pay your taxes like a good Christian slave. You be obedient because God put them there. I don't think so. God gave us law and love and peace. And that's the law that was given to us, not theirs. See, this is the law of the high seas, the holy sea, because you're lost out at sea, you're incompetent. That's the presumption they make. You're a ward of the state. You were born in a, in a, in a military facility, a hospital run by the Knights Hospitalier. Yeah, you find all the Knights are in there behind one of these businesses. It's a mafia. They control the crime. They don't, that's why they're bringing you, summonsing you to go to church because hey, you're not going to get any of our crime business and we're going to charge you for it. You're going to be paying for, for trying to dip into our slice of the pie. You're trying to get a slice of the pie. As Frank O'Collin shows and proves, they run the crime and they want it all. Not most of, like a fair mafia boss would, would do. You know, you've got Don Corleone on that part of town and then you've got Joe whatever on the other side of town and they respect their borders, right? These people don't respect you. They'll medicate you with fluoride in your water. They will inject you with thimerosal, uh, with mercury based um, thimerosal preservative in your vaccines. That's murdering you. And we bring our children there to be vaccinated and punched with it. And you, 30 vaccines before the age of five now in America. Man, I, I've never been vaccinated. My mother came out here from Italy from Calabria in 1956, didn't know a word of English, went and studied her brains out. She's quite intellectual and she speaks English very well. Um, within two years, she saw a show on TV. And on that show, they showed how many children have been damaged with vaccinations. This is 1958. You can imagine how much English my mother knew. But then I was born in 63 and she didn't vaccinate any of her children. I've never had a problem physically in my life. I've had one headache. Now I see people around me, friends of mine that have got arthritis, diabetes, asthma. My God, the list goes on and on and on because we're eating aspartame, we're, we're eating all that shit that they put out there deliberately, deliberately. And we've forgotten nature. We've forgotten who we are so we don't grab an apple off the tree which has vitamins and light. See, raw food is light food, and we are light bodies. So our light bodies are being dulled and dulled and dulled and dulled the more of this processed shit that we eat. You see people at the supermarkets, they've got boxes of this, cans of that, boxes of everything else, and like, who put them in the box? And, and how many processes go on before it gets in the box? There's cooking and double cooking, that's what biscuit means, in my language, biscotto means twice cooked. Bis means twice. Cotto means cooked. So you cook them twice, then just get that light out of there, just strip that food of light, and then put some flavours in there. <laughs> and some preservative to boot. And eat that, you dumb... And, and people eat it. You know, they've got this see, rock up there at the supermarket, and they've got boxes of all sorts of cornflakes and all that. My God! Look... 
Um, yes, diet this, diet that, white this, white that, everything's bleached. I mean, <clears throat> have you guys ever seen that getting around on the internet? McDonald's? The poo that they give people to, but they flavour it, so it tastes great. But it's poo nonetheless, right? Look at the process, McDonald's. And uh, for all people watching the uh, video, this is a plug for McDonald's. Uh, <clears throat> it's pre-chicken nugget meat paste, acker, mechanically separated poultry or mechanically separated chicken. The photo has been extensively passed around recently and for good reason. It's a peek into the rarely seen world of mechanically separated meat or advanced meat recovery. Or they call it AMR. You're eating AMR food. Good on you. Food, food, food educate, food educate writes, some American, American figured out in the 1960s that meat processors can eke out a few more percent of profit from chickens, turkeys, pigs and cows by scraping the bones 100% clean of meat. This is done by machines, not humans, by passing bones left over after the initial cutting through a high pressure sieve. sieve. The paste you see in the picture above is the result. That's, that's what they stripped off the bones with chemicals because there's profit in doing so. They're not going to give you real milk and real dairy ice cream and you it's know. It's a chemical strip, not a physical. Well hang on a minute, I, I haven't finished, just watch what it is. <laughs> just listen to this. There's more <laughs> because it's crawling with bacteria, it will be washed with ammonia. Good old ammonia. Soaked in it, actually. Then, because it tastes gross, it will be reflavoured artificially. That's your soft serve McDonald's. Then, because it is weirdly pink, weirdly pink, it will be dyed with artificial colour. That's uh, AMR food, people. The resulting paste goes on to become the main ingredient in many of Australia's favourite mass-produced and processed meat-like foods and snacks, bologna, hot dog, salami, pepperoni, meat jerky and of course the ever-polarising chicken nugget where the paste from the photo above was likely destined. And we bring our kids there and we oh, we're going to get a soft serve, son, because you've been good. You're really good today at shops. You're going to get a soft serve. <laughs> Ammonia, artificial flavour. There's no light. An apple. An apple the day keeps the doctor away. What's wrong with fruit, you know? But the light also feeds the intelligence to discern. So it's all, yes. and also all the flavours and the numbers, the number food, they create addictions. Yes. Mm. So yes, yeah, spot on. It's all, you know, self feeding. It really is. So anyway, look, the, the bottom line is that, uh, thanks for that. It's, um, Get some light into your people and you watch what happens. Mm -hmm. And uh, turn the TV off and uh, you know all that. <laughs> because otherwise we're not going to make what's coming. There's a big, big, big awakening coming. And we're going to benefit from it to varying degrees. We're going back home. There's no mistake about it. We, there's no mistake about it. And it's, in, and it's happening right before our eyes. Now, I know that because I have direct knowledge, not opinion and not belief. This, what I'm showing on astrotheology and the science and the key of understanding nature will give you that direct knowledge. You won't be going around like most of the people, full of opinions. Well, I think that the Labor Party, well, I think that we do this to the economy, we'll fix. You know, there's opinions, opinions they've vomited out they, and they're repeaters of false information that's been fed to them by the Illuminati in the first place. And they just go repeating not originally, they, they don't have any information of their own origin. So this gives us direct knowledge. And one fact that I know that is direct knowledge comes from my observations of astronomy. I look up and I can see that in the last six months the stars have shifted, they're all shifted. Check out on YouTube a video called The Shift is About to Hit the Fan and see <laughs> what the Eskimos, yeah. <laughs> There's this, you see these Eskimos, you know, they've got no teeth and everything, old fellas, you know, little, little wise men <laughs> sitting there in the interview, one after another being interviewed, and they're sitting there and they're explaining, they're going, the sun used to set over there, it sets over there now, 
And instead of one hour window of hour where we can do our hunting, we now have two windows. And the angle of the sun is much brighter and all our snow's melting. I know that. I know that. I don't have to believe this, people, because I've been paying attention to the position of the stars for a long time. Tonight at nine o'clock, you'll see Virgo, right? In the west. I'm disoriented. Over there. East is that away. Over there, right? You see the Virgin, and then you see Scorpio over here. Scorpio sets at about midnight. It's beautiful. And in fact, it, in the, the book of Revelation, it talks about this. It says, and the red dragon pursues the woman, and the woman flees into the wilderness. You see, when Virgo goes below the horizon, anything below the horizon, when, the star, when you lose sight of those stars in the west, they've gone to the valley of death. They've gone into the wilderness. And Scorpio is always... There's the Virgin, and she's about there now at 9 o'clock. And the red dragon, there's a red star in Scorpio, there's only four in the sky. And this one, Antares, that's a mother of a star, that one. It's so big and glorious. And that is the red dragon, and it pursues the woman. Its claws reach out to the two stars of Libra, and Libra sits on the equinox. And so that's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I'll show you that later. When the Virgin goes down into the wilderness, the red dragon pursues her, and the red dragon, it says in Revelation, vomits forth a river to, to drown the woman. Well, the river is coming up in Taurus, Eridanus. It's an extrazodiacal sign of Taurus. It's called Eridanus, or the Jordanus, the river in the sky, the Nile. Is that one of the Deckers? Yes, it's one of the, of, of, there's Orion, there's Origa, and there's Eridanus. You see, he is opposite. The red dragon is opposite the rock of God, the bull. It, it, the opposites are always, you've got to check the opposites, right? Sagittarius is opposite Gemini, right? Um, Capricorn is opposite Cancer. Probably be better if I pull this down. <clears throat> and this, this sky chart, this is the, the one that will explain all the mythologies. You won't have to worry about interpreting the Vedas or the Mahabharata or anything. It's, it's this. So you look at your opposites, okay? Capricorn, Cancer. Aquarius, John the Baptist with King Herod. The fish and the bread, Christian symbols. Aries and Libra. Here the Jews begin their sacred year. Here the Jews begin their secular year. And that's how it's... See, notice the green and the red. This is the Red Sea, the winter. Because... Springtime, the blossom, sun comes up, blossom. Everything begins. Everything begins over in Aries, okay? The horoscope begins with Aries. Right ascension starts with Aries. Um, <clears throat> the equinox is there at Aries, so the, the blossom represents the start of the season because everything's dead here, so it starts here. And this is the Easter, the Passover, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world because of the winter months. The sun now is growing and so the fruits and then the harvest and then you preserve the fruits so you can survive the winter and then bang again the blossom it's the sperm of the sun that's what it represents matter is born at zero planes that's a zero plane last time I checked 12 hours of night 12 hours of dark the 21st of March the equinox these are the magic days these are the solstices. That's the cross. Matter is born at zero planes of equal potential. That's where matter is born, at equal planes of equal potential. potential. Zero planes of equal potential. potential. Polarisation builds it up to maturity at 90 degrees, because this is polarisation, the feminine signs. Earth and water pull. See, the cardinal points, fire and air are masculine. That's a phase of electricity and another phase of electricity in the, in the sine wave. But these 90 degrees pulling away and giving amplitude to the wave is what causes the matter. And let's hear how, how Walter Russell puts it. Builds it up to maturity at 90 degrees from zero planes, depolarization, then returns to zero point at its birth. So... 
at that equal point, that's where the blossom begins. That's where the matter, the fruit starts and begins. So th this matter is here, it's not here. The, here is just death and cold and winter. Because in the Northern Hemisphere, of course, remember that. <laughs> it's opposite in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, <clears throat> but the mythology still stands and it still applies to us in the Southern Hemisphere. Please don't be confused. All you need to do is to understand the, this is probably one of the greatest books that you will ever, ever read, along with um, his other one. There are two volumes, Thomas H. Burgoyne, uh, where he, he explains all of this. All of it. That's where I got it from. Here he explains why the slippage of procession does not affect the science of astrology, nor do the hemispheres of north and south. It's just an illusion. The point of equilibrium here is the point where this earth receives its electric pulse every year. That is the point. This is the great magical point right here. And that's why everything happens here. Everything happens in Aries. I can give you a bunch of reasons uh, <coughs> why. I've written them down here just, just so that uh, I could share this with you. Aries. First degrees of Aries is right ascension. Cardinal fire, cardinal being close to the source, it's cardinal, cardinal fixed mutable is birth, growth, decay. That's what it is. So spring is born here, fix, fixes here at the cross quarter day, and then decays in the mutable sign. And the mutable always has two, two, two natures, man and horse, two fish, and mercury, two, duality. Mutability. So spring is born, fixates, then changes. Okay? Uh, the horoscope begins here. Adam Cadmon begins there. The head of the man. See, can you see the head? There's the neck, and these are the chakras. Right? This is the spiritual wisdom that was, that was bequeathed to us. That's the man. That's Adam Cadmon. In fact, this is the ascendant, this is the descendant, and this is the meridian. A Dum. That's Adam, the man above. So above, so below. You see how we need this science so that we know who we are? God damn it, we need this science. It's there. It's just there. You can just point to all the. I can go on and on and on, and you've probably seen some of the videos where I do. Um, it explains the grammar of everything, really, doesn't it? This explains everything, man. Mm. It's like sort of like the ancients have compendiumized everything right down into basically a seed. To this one science. This is Isis unveiled, man. We've just unveiled. This is the key to understanding everything that happens electrically in this universe. Because it's an electric universe. Here it is. The one becomes the two, becomes the three, becomes the four elements, becomes the seven planets and the seven chakras that are in there, becomes the twelve. And that's why Jesus has 12 apostles, the 12 tribes of Israel. We're all the 12 tribes of Israel. I'm Arian. Hands up. Any Geminis? Sagittarians? Scorpios? Well, this is it. This is Benjamin and Naphtali and Asher and Dan and Gad. We are the Israelites. These are the 12 tribes of Israel. Israel is the sun. Isis, Ra and El is this wheel. And they hide that. And this is the disgrace of the churches. And, and, and this guy, when he uh, busted them 170 years ago, 30 years after him came Kersey Graves, and he revealed to the world in this book that uh, the 16 crucified saviours that are to be found over, all over the planet are one and the same person. It's the son. <laughs> and uh, in, in his address to the clergy, address to the clergy, you want to read that, five pages where he says, uh, clergy types, your business, it's over. It's over. He said that 150 years ago. He gave notice to them back then. Why are we still here? And, and the churches have so much power? Because this is the power of the illusion. We need to bust the illusion and help churchgoers because they will never, they will never be saved by waiting for someone to come and save them. Salvation and ascension and consciousness comes from within. We don't do the work, we don't get the cookies. We don't. Now, 
interesting when you put videos out on YouTube, you get comments. <laughs> and some of them are great. One guy, he says to me, Santos, you know how you said uh, uh, that Little Red Riding Hood, the sun, <clears throat> let me read that from uh, John Thackeray Bunce's book, okay, on fairy tales. This is a, written in the 1800s. <clears throat> Just for the people who have not, who have not uh, seen my astrotheology videos. There's the Earth, there's the equator, there's the Tropic of Cancer, there's the Tropic of Capricorn, and there's the sine wave that, that pretty much, there's the sine wave, right? That's the obliquity of the ecliptic, because the obliquity, the ecliptic is the path of the sun, that it appears to make as it goes around, as our Earth goes around at 23 and a half degrees. And the obliquity is 23 and a half degrees. The true science is this, that that sine wave is, is closing up, closing in on itself. In 140,000 years, it will zero out. The axis of our Earth is not, is not fixed at 23 and a half degrees. It does one complete 360 degree revolution every two million 160,000 years. Now, did I say 2,160,000 years? That's the width of the, uh, the moon. That's the harmonic of everything to do with precession. This is the magic number. This is the magic number. And that's how long it takes for the Earth's axis to go right around 360 degrees. You know how they say to you that, uh, oh, the Chilean earthquake and the Japan earthquake caused the tilt of the earth to straighten up? No, that's what happens when you're a consensus scientist and you study effects rather than causes. It's the tilt of the earth that is causing the earthquakes. And some other things which I'm going to reveal because once you understand how the solar system works, then you're going to be onto these scientists and why they're telling us uh, little uh, stories. Does the planet grow every time we make Sirius? Yes. Now, well, the planet, the planet is, I'm going to get to that. The planet is expanding. It was once much smaller. Earth, as its orbit slows and its rotation increases, so all planetary bodies, their rotation increases and their orbits decrease in, in velocity. So they keep a balance of centripetal and centrifugal forces and they don't fly off on a tangent, okay? This is what your, science, your scientists won't tell you. You say, oh, the sun's in the middle of the solar system. All these planets go around it on the same plane, virtually on the same plane, right? Some of them are a little bit skewed. But the point is that they claim that we are orbiting the sun. We don't. We orbit with the sun. The sun is corkscrewing through the heavens at massive velocities and the planets, Mercury is just sitting behind it, rotating it every 88 days, Venus. And as they do, their orbits slow down and their rotation speeds up as they grow and they, they go further and further away from their primary and then they become stars, which our Earth is becoming. It's becoming a star because planets are embryos. They are not born. Stars are born, and that's what we are destined to be, according to all the... Look, I brought Ovid along. I brought, brought um, <coughs> the greatest of all of the books that talk about the soul, Scipio's Dream, and this is Macrobius's commentary. Macrobius was a Roman writer in the 4th century who explained this. I'm going to read out of this. Um, so, Little Red Riding Hood, as it is told in our nursery tales, is the evening sun, which is always described as red or golden. The old grandmother is the earth to whom the rays of the sun bring warmth and comfort. You're starting to get this, right? The, the old grandmother is, in a is the earth to whom the rays of the sun bring warmth and comfort. Isn't it beautiful when you start understanding the fairy tales and the Bible and all those grotesque stories like Jonah being swallowed by a whale, Samson killing a thousand Philistines with a jawbone of an axe, you know? I mean, come on, like God's going to bless him as a judge for going around killing people. He killed 30 men that came to his wedding. 
Uh, sorry, no, he didn't kill 30 men. He killed 30 men, murdered them for their undergarments and their cloaks because he made a riddle on his wedding night. He said, look, if you can guess this riddle, I promise you, whoever guesses the riddle, I will give you 30 undergarments. He said this to his 30 men that came to his wedding. See, 30 is... These are the 30 men. Samson is the son, because Shimshem... Shimshun, you Arabic? Yeah. Good on you. Shimshun, what does it mean? The son. Yeah. It's the little son. See, so Samson, one of those judges of Israel who kills 30 men, that's the sun when it goes through a sign. When the sun goes through Aries, it kills the lamb. And it slaughters the lamb, and the lamb was slaughtered. How many times do you read that in the Bible? <laughs> um, so Shimshem, as he goes through those 30 degrees, he kills... So in his, at his wedding, they guessed the riddle. So he was like, oh no, all flustered. Now what am I going to do? I've got to, get, got to, I've got to make good with my promise. So he goes down to the village, uh, I think he goes down to Gaza or, or, or one of those cities there. <laughs> so you see the history is all painted into it so it looks like it's historical. It's one of the tricks that they do. And it fools people. So he goes down there and he slaughters 30 men, takes their underwear and brings them back to his friends at the wedding and says, there you go, there's your underwear, see you later. Now, and that's, uh, we're telling kids, little children that go to church these stories and expect them to believe these grotesque things. But when you understand them, they're beautiful. Okay, so the, the wolf, which is a well-known figure for the clouds and blackness of night, is the dragon in another form. First he devours the grandmother, that is, he wraps the earth in thick clouds, which the evening sun is not strong enough to pierce through. Then, with the darkness of night, he swallows up the evening sun itself, and all is dark and desolate. Then, as in the German tale, the night thunder and the storm winds are represented by the loud snoring of the wolf. And then the huntsman, the morning sun, comes in all his strength and majesty and chases away the night clouds and kills the wolf and revives old grandmother earth and brings little red riding hood to life again. Or another explanation may be that the wolf is the dark and dreary winter that kills the earth with frost and hides the sun with fog and mist and then the spring comes. Anyway, whether you take the daily cycle of this as day and night or summer and winter matters not. Because this guy on my YouTube thing three weeks ago says, oh Santos, interesting how you said that uh, Little Red Riding Hood, the sun, turns red at sunset. Sorry. Turns red at sunset. See, this is 12 midday, 12 midnight. This is sunset, 6, 6 p.m. Turns red, Little Red Riding Hood. And, and there's, the, there's the, the virgin. And he said, do you know where the wolf is? See, I never thought of, uh, thought of this. He says, um, lupus. The constellation of lupus. Where would it be? Anyone got any idea? Upper right of Scorpio. Upper right of Scorpio. Well... Or just the other side of it. You might be right. I recall from one of the previous presentations. Yeah, there's lupus. He's in Libra. The wolf. The wolf of the night. The wolf of the past. The howling wolf. Our guilt-ridden consciences has to do with darkness. There he is. And um, where would Perseus be? The slayer of Medusa, the starlit night. Perseus is the sun. And when he rises in the morning, boom, he chops off Medusa's head. And he relishes in the conquest. Well, he'd be in Aries, wouldn't he? Yeah, that's where Perseus lives, in Aries. Six o'clock to eight o'clock every morning. Perseus, the slayer of Medusa. And there, there is the wolf, Lupus. All these documentaries that are coming out explaining these ancient myths and everything that you see on BBC and National and all that sort of stuff, that's just further confusing the whole story by still keeping it literal or putting it under myth without explaining <coughs> the astrotheology side of things. Yeah, be careful when you, when you see people trying to... <clears throat> 
explain things their way, the academic way, the way they've been drilled. <coughs> it's brainwashing, mind control. The Vatican has controlled people's delusions and illusions for 2,000 years now. But the age of Pisces, which is Christianity, the fish, <coughs> that's the Vesica Pisces, right? The two circles that share a common radius, and the number there is 153. 153. Remember, Jesus is about to ascend and he's having a cooking some fish, and he because he's, he's just died, right? And he's on the beach, and there's his uh, resurrected, and he's, there's his the disciples. On, the, on a boat and they haven't caught anything. So he says, hey, have you caught anything? Peter says, no. And, they, and so he says, well, cast your net on the other side. And they do. And, and all of a sudden the nets were bursting. And they counted the fish in the last chapter of the Gospel of John. And there were 153 fish. Pisces is the sign of the fish. We have been going through the sign of Pisces for 2,000 years. Now, when I bring out some books to bust the Christ historical, the literal historical Christ who was supposed to be born on the year 1 BCE, and hence we get our date 2011 from Jesus, that's a load of hogwash. It ain't pinned on a Jesus. It was Caesar Augustus, and I'm going to prove it. Caesar Augustus was the king. You look at the coins of Caesar Augustus, you see he's got, I've got pictures. Oh, they're coming. He's got a thorn, a crown of thorns. He is the God. They were worshipped as gods. JC is Julius Caesar. Is that with a law that's all of its justification? It is. It, it means the same thing. There's Macrobius. I'm going to show you that he's, he's given all these names of gods. Mars, Neton, Draco, Hercules, Adonis, Attis, Jupiter, Bacchus, Janus, Helios, Osiris, Hades. They all mean the sun. It's all the sun. He said that in the 4th century, the same guy who I'm going to read, he wrote these two, two books, the Saturnalia and the Dream of Scipio Commentary. And I'm going to be reading this in a minute. Guess who he um, says on page 215 of this book, just guess who he says was the son? Ieos. That'd be Jesus. That'd be Jesus. Um, and I'll show you that the, that the calendar is pinned on the Julian calendar, the uncle and the man who adopted Octavius, who changed his name to Caesar Augustus. It's pinned on, it's pinned on that, okay? There's, there's no mistake about this. There's no mistake about it. The worship of Caesar Augustus, Alexander Del Mar, proves it beyond a doubt. It's all based on that. And um, <clears throat> Julius Caesar and the Flavians, the Flavian dynasty, that book explains the whole thing. There's many more. Uh, look, I could have brought a, a, a ton of books. I had to leave many behind, but I'm, I'm going to go through these quickly to show what's in the content in there. So if you wish to, you can grab one of these books on Amazon and study the subject. It's urgent. It's really, really... Do you have a list of all those books? Yes, I do. At the end of my video, The Key, on YouTube, there's a list of 85 books. They are the best. I've put them there for that reason. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Well, I'm a slow reader. Yeah, I'm a slow reader. And, uh, but, but I, you know, sometimes I have to torture myself to, to just read because there's great information. And I feel like Giovanni Pico della Mirandola, who was the uh, hermeticist in the, in the Renaissance time, right? He was a, a disciple of, uh, well, a follower of uh, Marsilio Ficino, the guy who translated the Hermetica. Giovanni di Medici gave him the job. He said, stop translating Plato, put the Hermetica on the press, on the Gutenberg press, and then the Renaissance flowered from the Hermetica. That was Marsilio Ficino, and his student at the age of 24, Giovanni Pico della Mirandola, uh, I feel like him, he said the famous words, he said, um, Divine providence has caused certain books to fall in my hands. He said that 500 years ago. He said that to uh, De Medici one day when he saw him in Rome. And those words are famous. And I feel like that. When I started 
seriously started studying this subject only four years ago. This was the first book I read on the 19th of October 2007. I've been going to Jehovah's Witness meet, I was a Jehovah's Witness for 20 years and fell into, well I stopped going to their meetings in 2005 and sort of hit limbo. But I did my studies, I read the Bible and I mastered that book. I know it better than any theologian types out there, any of them, because I used to read it. Read that and I opened my eyes. It talks about the Zionist Jews, the people who claim to be Jews, the synagogue of Satan who claim to be Jews, they're Khazarians, they're not Jews, and who are running the world. They run Rome. See, people write into me saying, what about the Jews? Certainly they're evil and they're doing this and they're doing that. Well, if you understand how this bunch of criminals have hijacked the wonderful good name of the Jew, which means, well, look in Acts chapter 2 and you'll understand who Jews are. They're intellectual, wise men from every country under the sun. They're not a race. Um, anyway, Giovanni Pico della Mirandola, 24 years of age, he went down to Rome from Renaissance Florence and he said, uh, he put up all these posters around, around Rome saying, I will debate with any one of you buffoon ap apostolic senate of cardinals. I'll debate with you and show you that everything is syncretic. And that's what I'm doing. I'm here to follow this guy's work and Giordano Bruno who was murdered by Rome in 1600. Those two are modelling. He went down to Rome with 900 theses 30 years before Martin Luther and his 30 bullshit version. These were the real, this was the real version because he was trying to syncretise, not divide even further like Martin Luther did and brought on a 30 year war and slaughtered and butchered and Calvin and all those buffoons and the people who followed them. They're just a bunch of murderers. That's all they are. And if you ever want to read the best book on philosophy, that's Pico della Mirandola's little book on philosophy saying only science and philosophy will save mankind. And guess who else says that? The genius, Walter Russell. At the end of his book, after proving that the, world is, the whole world is electric and none of this other, f you know, well, you, read, you heard that list of <laughs> all those subatomic particles. Does he predate Tesla? No, he's a contemporary. Yes. At the end of his book, he says, um, <clears throat> knowledge alone will lead man to that supreme discovery. It is the office and responsibility of science to illumine the way for all men who are seeking the kingdom of heaven. It's not the churches. Science is their enemy. Um, <clears throat> now, here's an amazing fact about the Bible, guys. This will blow your mind. This date here is equivalent to Nisan 14 of the Jews. It's the Passover because the sun gets killed on the 21st of December. Finally it climbs up out of the winter, the Red Sea. This is red for a reason and this is green, the lush photosynthesis. And you see how it corresponds with the torso of the human being with all its chakras. And notice the red here, where little red riding hood, the Red Sea, because the green leaves of the tree begin to turn red here in September in the Northern Hemisphere. So the sun is, so they look at the red tree and they go, the red leaves and they say, oh yeah, well the sun's now passing through the Red Sea. And, and see the chakras, the bottom chakra, it's the red one. The violet one's up here, the crown chakra. Let's have a look at some images, shall we? There's the name of the sun, I-E-S in Greek. I-E-S, the yes. I've shown that in other videos, okay? I've shown that. There's the uh, Korean flag. Bit of science there, isn't it? Spirit and matter. Fire for red, water for matter. Earth, air, fire and water. That's the Korean flag, South Korean flag. That corresponds with... the sine wave because it goes around into itself. Red and blue, spirit, summer and matter, winter. Good and evil. Why would these people be wearing these uh, solar symbols? That's the crown chakra. The crown chakra is 
These people are kings. They are Christs. Horus is Christ. See the serpent? The Uraeus and the eagle at the top of the uh, Tutankhamun's mask there? When you bring that Kundalini serpent up and you drive it up and you get all your chakras flying and spinning in your Merkaba wheel, your light body, then you get a flying out of here. There's the chakras, guys. The bottom chakra has four petals. Six petals, ten, heart chakra, twelve, sixteen, ninety-six. Any math mathematicians around? How much does that add up to? 144. Mu multiplied by the thousand leafed clover of the, uh, the crown chakra, that's 144,000. You know the song, I let the saints, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh Lord, I want to be in that number. The number is the 144,000. If you want to be one of the 144,000, you have to work on your chakras. That's the seal on the forehead. That's in the forehead. That they were sealed. It says in Revelation chapter, um, uh, I think it's chapter 12. See, I'm glad I did my fictional study of the Bible because <laughs> I know it backward. <laughs> and I heard, and next, yeah, Revelation chapter 14. It says, uh, next in my vision I saw Mount Zion. That's Mount Zion, man. So he saw Mount Zion and standing on it a lamb. This is the head. And this stands on the holy, holy mountain. March used to be called Primus. Primus means fir the first. Primus, Secundus, Tertius, Quartus, Quintus, Cestus, and then Sept is seven. See, September is the seventh month, if you start at Aries, where you're supposed to. The blossom begins here, the start of the North Cycle. The ascendant begins here. Remember, A, ascendant, descendant, meridian, spells out the name Adam. There's a lot of reasons why it all happens and starts there. But the holy mountain that it's talking about in Revelation chapter 14 and the, and the 144,000 stand on that holy mountain, um, who had with him 144,000 people, all with his name and his father's name written on their foreheads, sealed in their foreheads. It's the, it's the chakras. That's the 144,000. Check out the work of Maurice, Maurice Cottrell. And he's got a series called uh, Secret of the, um, the Gods, the Serpent uh, something. But anyway, Maurice Cottrell, he's got a few videos. Check it out, where he shows he gets a picture of Pakal, the, uh, the jade mask of Pakal in Palenque, Mexico. And he gets two, two of those pictures of, of, of the, the jade uh, um, mosaic mask of Pakal. And he superimposes them 14.4 degrees. And guess what appears on the forehead of Pakal? The number 144,000. He must have read Revelation over there in Mexico hundreds of years ago. What's this? The Kabbalistic tree of the Jews. Can you see the Christ hiding behind there? See... Your seven chakras are equivalent to the ten, the ten spheres of the, the Kabbalistic tree. The tree of life is in you. The Christ is in you. You are the Christ. That's what the Apostle Paul is talking about when he says the Christ within. Where is the Holy Grail? Does anyone know where the constellation Crater is? Well, the constellation Crater is right here in Cancer. Because, as I'll read to you in the commentary of Macrobius, the 12th chapter, he goes on to explain how our souls come from the Milky Way, the milk, the mother. See, our Milky Way galaxy is Isis. It's feminine. And her partner is Andromeda. Andro, in Greek, last time I checked, was Husband, man, andros is man, right? Androgynous, all those andro words. So Andromeda, our next door 
galaxy is the man, the male, the partner of Isis, our Milky Way galaxy, explained here very carefully. It doesn't explain that, but it ex explains what the Milky Way means. The origin of all these souls that are found here today on this planet. And it comes down the seven rung ladder of Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, the Sun, Venus, Mercury, the Moon. So Saturn is the first and the Moon is the last. This is the vision that John had in Revelation. The Moon is the Alpha, Mercury, Venus, the Sun, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn is the Omega, the Alpha and the Omega, because the seven planets are the seven vowels, according to the Jews. And the consonants, the twelve consonants, are the twelve signs of the zodiac. And when you add the Earth, Neptune and Uranus, you get the number 22. They all add up to 22. The tarot cards, the letters of the Jewish alphabet, etc, etc, etc. It's all here. The tarot is this. The Torah is this. Everything is this. Everything. The whole lot. The whole, everything you need to know. That's nature. That's how it works. Anywhere in the universe. Okay, so at this point we shall discuss the order of the signs by which the souls descend from the sky to the infernal regions of this life. So he's discussing the most important thing that you could ever discuss, right? What could be more important than knowing how the souls came from the Milky Way and descended, like you said, to the infernal regions where we are now? The Milky Way girdles the zodiac, its great circle meeting it obliquely so that it crosses at the two tropical signs, Capricorn and Cancer. Because when the sun climbs up from Aries, the start of the year, and it climbs up to Capricorn, uh, to Cancer, that little day, that good old day, the 21st of June, magic day, the longest day of the year, then it goes down to Capricorn. This fella, Cancer, is ruled by the moon. Because the tilt of the earth causes it to be closer to the sun in the northern hemisphere. Not closer physically, not the planet closer to the sun, because it's not. Okay, it's the tilt of the earth. So in the northern, if, there's, if here's the sun, if here is the sun, in the northern hemisphere, the tilt will be like that in summer. Because, he, and, and these people in Australia will be experiencing winter. And then when it goes around the other side of the sun, it's the opposite. But because it's closest, and the moon is the closest sphere to the earth, they place the sphere in Cancer. The moon is, the moon, That's how it sits. Always sits like that. You never change it like that. That's the Jewish candelabra, the seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's Cancer. There's the moon. The moon rules Cancer. Guess who rules Capricorn? Good old Saturn. And this is what they, the ancients knew. And they explained that our souls descend from the moon sphere and uh, descend and ascend out of the rings of Saturn. Those rings of Saturn, <laughs> you know, Saturn, he's got the, the, the scythe, he's the grim reaper, dressed in black. Well, they're the same people in your church who uh, are dressed in black. The Saturn church is the Latin church. That's why they give you a whole bunch of Latin words when they summons you, you know, the accused, uh, a hearing, hmm. Because it's, it's, it's the Inquisition, man. It's still on. And because we haven't stopped it. We're going to stop it. We are stopping it. Are you enjoying this? this? Isn't it great when you start putting it together, guys? It's there. I'm just pointing to it. I didn't make any of this up. You know? It's like a, a watchmaker. I always say this. You know, a watchmaker, you, you got... If, I guarantee you, if you pull one of those ladies' watches apart, right? If you know how to do it for a start, and you put it down, there's no one in this room that will be, be able to put it together again, would they? Anyone? But you get one of those jewelers in Switzerland, and he's got his little thing on, he's, give me five minutes, there you go. And you're off and you're telling the time for the rest of, because the watch works, because he puts it together. It's all here, but you've got to read, right? And what do they tell you in church? 
Well, when I was going to church anyway, the Jehovah's Witnesses, all oh, brothers, make sure you just read the Bible and the Watchtower Tract publications because everything else is from the devil. Mm. I think the people who invent the devil are the devil because they promote him. It's a fictional concept. They promote him, so let them have it. It's theirs. Don't take any ownership of their, their fictional concepts because it's, it's, it's doing them harm more than it is doing anyone else. And the Bible tells you. <clears throat> this man who in 1830, remember, he wrote a sermon which is not in that book. That book has 24 sermons. This is one that didn't get published, but he wrote a sermon, Belief, Not the Safe Side. It's not. And he proves in here that the Bible tells you that it's not. The scripture, where the Christians and the church go say, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name and expel demons in your name and perform wonderful works in your name? And I will say to you, get away from me, you workers of lawlessness. I never knew you. That's church girls, because we're not doing that. We're not run, ranting and raving about how, how, how we, uh, we're doing all these church things for, for Jesus, like uh, converting pagans who understand the cycles of nature. Let's divorce them from nature and bring them to Christ, shall we? And of course, if they don't get baptised, we've always got the sword in the right hand. The Bible's in the left. <clears throat> Souls are believed to pass through these portals when going from the sky to the, south, to the earth and returning from the earth to the sky. For this reason, one is called the portal of men and the other the portal of gods. Take note of this, guys. This is rich. This is how we came here. They knew it. They knew it. And this is only one. I can read from the Kybalion. I can read from my god Virgil, a porphyry, Plutarch. Plutarch's the great one. Uh, Ad nauseum. It's, it's, they knew that the souls came from here, the rishis go back to the moon, then they send in order Mercury and they get out of this time conquered place, Saturn. That's why the Latin church, the Saturn church, controls the Julian calendar. The one that has enslaved us all, the Julio, Julio Gregorian calendar. Rome rules the world, man. They own the calendar. They own the alphabet that even in the Asian countries and African countries will have on their computer fingerboards everywhere, in their law courts, everywhere. It's this language, the Latin language. They own the concept of Christian democracy based on a historical Christ. Right? What else has Rome given? Come on, man, it's everything. It's all architecture. You go to Melbourne, look around. It's Roman, 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 Grecian, Roman, Roman. There's a few Greek things there. Corinthian pillars and whatnot, but it's all Roman. And it will fall down as soon as we start shaking a bit and vibrate higher. It's a house of cards, man, and we're going to blow it down. I'll get back to the, the cup because I want to show you how the cup was placed here. Because here it says that when the souls come down, Crater is here in between Leo and Cancer because we drink of the intoxicating liquor of the cup as our souls descend and we forget who we are. Because we drink from that cup, the Holy Grail. Remember, Perseus is over here. Everybody's in their right positions. I can go on and on and on, and, and I recommend, I'm not gonna do it now, because I want, really wanna get into some meat, meaty other stuff other than astrotheology. I have seven three-hour products on YouTube, on the internet, that I encourage you to get into. Get into them. It's free on the internet. You know? Santos Bonacci, Astro Theology. My YouTube site is um, Mr. Astro Mr. Astro Theology. You're a subscriber, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so check them out and you'll see all the dates. I've placed all the dates there, man. I've gone into so many books to show you how all the dates, all of them, they're all there. And as the sun goes, we go. See, the sun is born here and conquers starts waxing up the mountain, just like the moon does, right? It conquers. And as it conquers, the moon, see, the moon takes 14 days to go to full moon, and then new moon, full moon. That's the same as the sun, exactly the same. Full sun, new sun. So that's why you celebrate on the 25th of December, the birthday of the sun. 
And then, of course, the sun travels 30 degrees and it finds itself in John the Baptist territory. See John the Baptist baptizing the sun? You see, because January is January the Baptist. John, Janus, John the Baptist. And every year, after 30 days of climbing, this is the wet season. And so the sun gets a hell of a baptizing by Aquarius. And then it comes into February. Well, Febru, last time I checked, in Latin means purification. And in fact, the 1st of February is the day of purification of the Virgin. That's where she purifies herself. So does Jesus, so do we. You know, because we're, we follow the sun. It's, not, it's, not, it's, a, it's, a, it's an allegory which has a benefit. It has an ethos, an ethos, an ethic, which far outweighs the morals that they teach you in church. They steal your ethics. But the ethics are here because the sun, as the sun grows, gets purified, then lengthens. And here we have Lent, where we eat fish, the 40 days of Lent from, from this cross-quarter day, February the 1st, Groundhog's Day, to the equinox. Well, there's 40 days in there, and, and that is Lent. It's short for lengthen, because the sun is lengthening and lengthening, and then bang, equal. And then you've got longer, night, longer days, shorter nights, instead of short, shorter days, longer nights, down here. So everybody hates this. This is the accursed. This is hell. In Italian, inverno is, pretty much sounds like inferno to me. Just one letter changed, the V and the F. Inverno, inferno. Inferno, inverno is down here. This is summer. Summer is the paradise. This is the green paradise that we all wait for. And remember, the blossom is here, bang, the sperm of the sun, and it produces fruit. And then it's harvested in the virgin, and then it's preserved so that we... You see, so this teaches, this is an ethic. As the sun conquers, so do we. What do we conquer? Well, we conquer, we activate our seven powers and turn our vices into virtues. Bang, 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 we get out of the three bottom chakras, survival, sex, uh, and um, what's the other one? Power, right? This is, this is where your George Bushes would have to be, wouldn't they? Halle Burton, we're going to kick your butt, rack. <laughs> and then we, we come into the middle one, the sun, ruled by the sun, the heart, the heart chakra. And we wake up and Jesus is knocking on the door and we open the door and share an evening meal. That's what it's talking about. When it knocks here, when, the, when you hear that knocking, when you hear the calling, see there's three types of people on the planet. The captive, the chosen, the called, and the chosen. The captive are the herd. The herd. That's what Parmenides, Parmenides uh, called, um, called the captives in his poem. He had a beautiful poem. He was the contemporary of Pythagoras and he said, I looked upon the herd. Back then in the Bronze Age there was a herd. Imagine now in the Iron Age. They're the captives. They're in jail. Then they get called. Someone knocks. You know, the, the higher mind starts to awaken and you start going, hey, yeah, it's not like I've been told. It's not like I've been told. Something's wrong. Something's really wrong. Leonardo da Vinci. Genius or not? Yeah, genius, okay. If you find from your own experience that something is a fact and it contradicts what some authority has written down, then you must abandon the authority and base your reasoning on your own findings. Anyway, look, I won't read that because I want to move on. It's in here, it's beautiful, he, where he says, and the cup has been placed here because as the souls descend, they drink of intoxication. And that's why there is opinion about the divinity. This church says he's angry. This church says he's loving. Another church says he's, he's Jewish. Another church says he's uh, whatever. Opinion, 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 opinion. Because they drank too much of that cup. That's what it says. They said some drink more than others. The cup of intoxication. It's worth reading. Scipio's dream. It's only 10 pages, the original of that. So there's the cup. Now, in the book of Revelation, um, 
there's, there's, the, there's what's described. That's how the Lord God is described. Right? Pay attention to this. Because there are seven features. And it's describing Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, Mercury and the Moon. All right? Um, let me read that. Okay, so in the first chapter of um, Revelation, John describes the Lord. He sees the Lord. And that's that image. You see the sword coming out of the mouth? That's Mars. Mars always carries a sword. Mars is over here with Perseus too. Mars rules Aries. Sword is there, man, to conquer the darkness. Mars conquers the darkness every morning at 6am and every springtime. That's the sword. The grey hair, that's good old Kronos. Old man Kronos. He's got the grey hair. Um, the, uh, it's funny, we're talking about God as a bloke, as a um, uh, he gender, and yet he has a girdle about his bosom, about his paps. Why would you have a, why would you have a girdle around you like a bra? Oh, well, that's Venus. Anyway, look, I'll, I'll read it from the Bible. And um, I turned around to see who had spoken to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands and surrounding, surrounded by them a figure like a son of man. So it's definitely identified as a man. Dressed in a long robe, tied at the waist with a golden girdle. Tied at the paps, is what most ver versions say. His head and his hair were white as white wool or as snow. His eyes like a burning flame. His feet like burnished bronze when it has been refined in the furnace. And his voice like the sound of an ocean. In his right hand he was wielding seven stars. Hmm. Would they be the uh, planets that dominate the seven days of the week? Sunday, the sun. Monday, the moon. Saturn day for Saturn, etc. They're the seven stars. Out of his mouth came a sharp sword, double-edged, and his face was like the sun, shining with all its force, because it was the sun. You see, this guy, <clears throat> the guy who wrote the book, um, James, I think his name is James Price, James M. Price in the 1800s, and he had this image, and I had to copy it and share it with you today, because it exposes there what the book of Revelation is all about. The, the book of Revelation is an initiation, and that's what's happening to you guys today. We're being, in, you're getting an initiation in the holy doctrine. This is the hidden manner, the hidden knowledge, the da'at of the, the Kabbalistic tree, the 11th pseudo -sephira. You open knowledge, as Walter, Crook, Walter Russell said in his book, knowledge, science, is the one that will get you to the kingdom of heaven. See, science and knowledge are one and the same word. Shenza, in my language, conoscenza, it's the same word. You see, we think it's like you've got to study in a university, that's science. No, science is knowledge. Kronos, the white hair of Hori. Zeus, Jupiter, the blazing eyes of wide seeing. The keen sword of Ares, Mars. The shining face of Ilios, the sun. The kiton and girdle of Aphrodite, Venus. The swift feet of er, er, Hermes, Mercury, Hermes. Hermes is Hermes. Um, the wave murmuring voice of Cellini, Cellini, Magdalene, Mary Magdalene, anything with a Helen, Helen is the moon in all the mythologies. So Cellini is the moon, the Alpha and the Omega, the seven vowels. A, E, I, E, O, U and O. Now, here's an interesting fact that's going to blow your mind. I was getting to that, and boy, I sure did deviate, didn't I? Remember Nisan 14 over here? All right. Nisan 17 is three days after Nisan 14, which is basically the crossing at the equator, the holy day, the equinox, the one and only holy day, the beginning of the sine wave, the beginning of everything. There, right there. Nisan 17 happens right here, okay? Guess what uh, 
has happened on that day. Noah lands on Mount, Mount Ararat on Nisan 17. His boat that he made, Nisan 17, bang, crashes on Mount Ararat. Jesus ascends to heaven on Nisan 17, and the Israelites come out of the Red Sea on Nisan 17. Check it out. Check it out. Because that, and that is busted. That one, you want to learn that one. Uh, you might want to read this book. This guy's great. He had six, he's got six books on Amazon. They're all about five bucks each. And he's got the best astrotheology. His name is Malik H. Jabbar. So, yeah, he's probably Egyptian. The Egyptians know their stuff, man. They know the astrotheology. Check out some of the great, like, um, um, Ahmed Osman. Check out his works. How he explains how when you're reading the Bible about Moses and Jesus and all these characters, go to the 18th dynasty of Egypt and you'll find all the characters there. Because what the ruling current empire does is it grabs the mythologies from the skies and brings them down to earth and applies it to the ruling dude like Julius Caesar is Jesus Christ. Rome borrowed the Jesus story and, and made it historical to suit Rome to gather taxes. How do I know this? Well let's uh, see what the Oracle of Delphi has to say. Plutarch, one of the most prolific writers of the first century, he wrote 84 books, right? I'm going to read from there and show how he had to debunk a guy called Ephemeris for doing this, for going around making mythologies and placing them on the earth so that the, the silly Greeks believed that Hercules was a man and the silly Egyptians started to believe that Osiris was actually uh, a man and they had, and Plutarch ridicules them. He says, well, there's a tomb for Osiris in Memphis, there's one in Thebes, there's one in... Bloody... They're all over the place because they think that he walked, walked the earth. Osiris didn't walk the earth. When Osiris gets cut up into 14 different, uh, his body gets cut up into 14 different pieces, right? Well, that's, there are 14 lunar mansions above the equator and there are 14 lunar mansions below the equator. So the moon is Isis here, but she is her sister, her dark sister, Nephthys, over here. And so she has to collect the 14 pieces, the 14 houses below, when, when Osiris, because Osiris dies here, the sun is Horus over here at the horizon, Ra at the radiant royal regal position at 12 o'clock midday, summer, Set when it sets, I mean, or you can call him Atum, which is autumn, the fall, autumn, set, sunsets, Atum, autumn, and then he's called Osiris in the tomb, and he's black, of course, because Saturn is black. Saturn rules here, down in winter. Osiris rules, that's the tomb. And in the Bible, when Jesus resurrects Lazarus, well, that would be... Lasiris, because mm, it's an Aramaic version of the Egyptian story of Osiris, where the son says, Osiris, come out of the tomb, and he is born as his son, Horus, the son of Osiris, on the horizon every day. That's the tomb, the Red Sea, Hades, Tartarus. It's all there. I'll just read him from Plutarch in a minute. I'm flying along, I know quite a few of you, I can see a sort of like going <laughs> It's a big download of information, but as I said, you can look over the video in your, just cr cruise along with this, you know, don't worry about taking notes and everything, because you, but um, just go, cruise along with it and it'll, it'll um, you, when you watch the video, then you'll, you'll remember all these points, they're good points. I've tried to put them all together on a schedule, and I'm, sti I'm sticking to the schedule too, by the way, all right, so don't think I've gone on too many tangents here. We're going to get through what, what I promise we'll get through. We will bust the law, the religion, and the science. The science is great. Uh, he says here, um, I hesitate lest this thing, this is the first century, right? This, he, he writes nothing about Jesus, nothing. And there's a lot of silence. I'm going to show this. A lot of science. 
a, a, a lot of um, historians around the time. There is not a shred of extra biblical evidence written down to prove that Jesus was historical. Did you know that? There's not a shred. Nothing. Not under this sun. You want to go to another, you know, another place to find it? Good luck. And if, if there was, you, you would think that the, ca the Catholic Church would own it and display it at the Vatican before the eyes of all inquiring minds. But they can't because there ain't none. And I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you how Tacitus, you see churchgoers, churchgoers say, oh, Tacitus mentioned Jesus, therefore he existed. Josephus, Pliny the Younger, and Suetonius. Basically the paper that I'm going to read from, you can use it in your, in your toilet. You can't take it to court to prove that Jesus existed. And I'm going to debunk that because it must be done. And I'll show you that this, Augustus, the guy with the crown of thorns, you can see these, if you've got a coin collection, you'll see he's got the crown of thorns. That is the Messiah. He was worshipped as a god. Augustus means god. The august one. I hesitate lest this be the moving of things immovable and not only warring against the long years of time as Simonides has it, but warring too against many a nation and race of men who are possessed by a feeling of piety towards these gods. And thus we should not stop short of transplanting such names from the heavens to the earth. Back then, man, forget about Jordan Maxwell and uh, Michael Zarian and Zeitgeist busting them now. And these guys, Gerald Massey, I've got Alvin Boyd Kuhn. What a beautiful book this is. They're busted big time. He proves that everything in the Bible is absolutely spiritual. It's not historical. This book alone. And this, this is a good video by Ammon Stop Productions to show how what Pluto was saying Check out the JC family, the Julian f dynasty of Rome, how they set it all up. And then came the Flavians, 30 years of bloodshed in Rome. They built the Colosseum, the Flavian Amphitheatre, to give the masses bread and circuses. Because you can just do whatever you want if you give them bread and a few circuses. Go to the footy, 100,000. How many were there at uh, Collingwood Geelong last night? There must have been, I think it was 95,000. Not that, I mean, I love football. <laughs> it's sport, and I'm not attacking sport, but I'm just saying, see how the herd, 100,000 will turn up. For that. You get uh, the Dalai Lama or something, and there's three people there sitting at his feet. You know, or, or someone who's got something to say about peace and love. And uh, uh, Bill Clinton comes along, and $1,200 a ticket, you can listen to his bullshit. He tell, he telling you the vomitous lies and, and people pay and they sit there, oh, it's Bill Clinton, oh my God. Murderer of many, many, many innocent people. He pulled off uh, Wake, uh, uh, Oklahoma, pulled it off. Check it out on, 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 on the internet. Find out who these uh, politicians are and what they're really doing behind the scenes. Very nasty Bohemian Grove types who do a lot of things in darkness, like uh, things with children and uh, things to do with sacrificing and all this sort of stuff. You know, they uh, call themselves Christians, so ostensibly people think, oh yeah, we've still got a Christian country or whatever, even though that's the worst kind of setup to have. You look at uh, Jefferson and what he had to say about Christianity, the fiction of Christianity. I'll read some of those quotes in a minute, but I'll get through this. So they transplant the names from heaven to the earth and eliminating and dissipating the reverence and faith implanted, <coughs> implanted in nearly all mankind at birth. See? By bringing those heroes, Hercules, down to earth, he's saying, eliminating and dissipating the reverence and faith implanted in nearly all mankind at birth. Children, look at children. They know God. They're right there at the source. And they see fairies and they see all these things and we, we shut them down real quick. Oh, don't, don't want the neighbours to hear talking about all these things that you're seeing, all these spiritual creatures and things like that. Let's kill that right now. Uh, 
and great doers of the godless throng, degrading things divine to a human level and giving a splendid license to the deceitful utterances of Euphemerus of Messene, who himself drew up copies of an incredible and non-existent mythology and spread atheism over the whole inhabited earth by obliterating the gods of our belief and converting them all alike into names of generals, admirals and kings who forsooth lived in very ancient times and are recorded in inscriptions written in golden letters at Panneon, which no foreigner and no Greek had ever happened to meet with, save only Euphemerus. He, it seems, made a voyage to Panachians and Triphelians who never existed nowhere on earth and do not exist. You understand the point, don't you? He was, he was saying that this buffoon was, was telling people that the, the mythologies happened on the earth and converting people into what he calls atheism and, and pulling them away from the reverence of the gods. Because when we know these planets and what they're doing for us and how crucial they are to our existence and shaping our bodies and our destinies and our health, you know, when you understand the science of astrology, and you know where the planets are, are, are positioned in your birth chart, you'll know if there's any oppositions or squares or trines or sextiles or malefics or benefics, and you'll know what's going on in your body. If there is, for instance, a planet in Pisces and another one directly opposite in Virgo, that's an opposition. That's 180 degrees. So check out your stomach, man. You've got problems with your stomach because that's an opposition. If you have a trine, say from an earth sign to another earth sign, there's a planet here and there's a planet here, that trine, 120 degrees, that will bless your stomach and you'll have a good strong stomach. That's how it works. So the I have slippage of possession doesn't affect that at all? Not at all, no, because it's all based on the solar system. It's not based on the stars the 30 degree slots of the stars as they slip back every 24,000 years and go right around. You see, the equinox was in, has been in, this equinox here doesn't happen exactly on the 21st of March anymore. It happens way, well, no, it happens on the 21st of March, but it doesn't happen in Aries anymore. It happens in Pisces over here, and we are now entering the age of Aquarius. Air, spirit, the Holy Spirit. So, the baptizer is going, the, he's, he's actually pouring down waters of spiritual truths as we leave the age of Pisces ruled by Rome. This is Rome, man. That's Rome. Pisces is all over. We're at the cusp of Aquarius. And Aquarius, Aquarius is taken over. And it's a bigger consciousness. It's the return of the Christ. See, he's already come before because we are conscious spiritual creatures. And that happened 12,000 years ago when we reached the Golden Age. And then we fell from sil silver to bronze and then to iron. And the golden age was occurring over here. In this, and then we've, we've gone, the equinox has, has done 12,000 years. It's gone from here to here. And now we are climbing back on a different level of the spiral. We never go round and round like this into the same place. We go up. We're always evolving, going up, 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 up to the heavens. Yes. I understand what you're saying is the Catholic Church, because that's the Catholic Church there. Uh, their power will just go, disappear eventually, and there's nothing left. The mutable world water, the spiritual meaning of the age of Pisces, has to do with priestcraft and deception yeah. and punishment and karma and getting things right mm -hmm. and growing and becoming yeah. a Christ conscious being, which, which is coming. Yeah. Can't there's no stopping this. The awakening that's happening that you're seeing around, is, there's no stopping it. So it's natural. So a Krishna consciousness as well? It is. Of course, Krishna is Christ. Kronos is Christ. Kronos is the opposite of Jesus. They're the twin brothers, you see. Because the relationship that Saturn has with the, the sun, 29 days it takes to go around the orbit, in its orbit. 
the moon takes 29 and a half, sorry, 29 and a half years it takes for Saturn to do one orbit. Right? That's, that's, a, that's a Saturnian year. So you round it off to 30. That's why a man reaches maturity at 30. Jesus gets baptised at 30. He's in the temple at 12 because that's Jupiter. Jupiter takes 12 years to do an orbit. See, it's, it, the religion is Jupiterian and it's Saturnian, Christianity is. That's why you always see 12 and 30, Saturn and Jupiter. <laughs> and so, but Saturn, um, 29 and a half years to, in, with its relationship to the sun, the moon has 29 and a half days in its relationship to the earth. And the, the moon is the, the womb of the, the earth. Of course, we remember that the moon is where the souls come down. It's the ovaries of the solar system. It's the womb. And, and it, it has that 29 and a half day contact with the earth. And it's very powerful magnetic contact. And Saturn, Saturn's doing that to the sun. That's why they're brothers opposed to each other. You see, when you look at astrology, you see uh, Jesus and Mary Magdalene are here in, in, in Cancer and Leo. So there's the sun and Mary, Magdalene, Jesus, J-E-S is the sun, right? Opposite both of them, opposite the moon will be in Cancer is always Saturn and opposing the sun is always Saturn. Saturn has taken his positions sternly against the sun and the moon. He is the great opposer. You see, he always has bad aspects in astrology to, to the sun. Mercury never has any bad aspects because Mercury can never be more than 28 degrees away from the sun in any birth chart. Just grab a, anyone's birth chart and you'll see there's the sun and Mercury is always next to it and Venus because their orbits are always around the sun. So they're always giving good aspects to the sun. But this guy, he's the great opposer. And then if you look at Jupiter, so Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, Mercury. Mercury is always next to the sun. See? Gemini and Virgo, is the, 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 Mer, Mercury can never be further away from this. See how it's all science? It's all science. Then, and then Venus, of course, and then Aries, uh, uh, Mars, and then Jupiter. So when you understand this, and when you understand that all of this <clears throat> is pure science, there's the solstice of the 21st, of June, Cancer, and there's the solstice of Capricorn. The unicorn is in Cancer, the Capricorn, the corn is the horn of the cornucopia, of abundance, of souls coming in and going, coming and going, coming and going, up and down Jacob's ladder, the seven rung ladder of Jacob. As Plato said, we come from the Milky Way, and these guys are quoting, quoting Plato, Macrobius, basically, because Scipio's dream comes from Cicero and Cicero was writing in the, the Republic and the Republic was famous by Plato. So everybody that's writing literature is going to call it the Republic because they're all modelling it after Plato's Republic. And Scipio's dream is the fragment that we, that we have that was in that Republic. And, uh, and so they're all quoting Pla Plato that we come from, Mer from the Milky Way and then down the rings of Saturn, Jupiter, Ven uh, Sun, at Mars, Sun, Venus, Mercury, Moon. And it's going up and down and up and down, just like the atomic elements are doing, the 92 so-called elements. They're going from hydrogen all the way down to uranium and, and up again. It's just a, a ladder of energy climbing up and down the vibration scale. Because everything is motion. Everything. There's no substance here. None of this is substance. It's all motion. And, and this explains it. Like... Walter Russell says that's the moment when matter is produced, it begins there, and air is that blossom. That's the sperm period, and the blossom represents that. What a beautiful, poetic way of doing that, eh? Isn't it beautiful? The sun splits the day there, ting, and then, and it goes up to 90 degrees, removal of that light force. And the feminine power is over here. See, these are masculine, the equinoxes. The solstice is the feminine. Radiation, gravity. That's how he explains it. Simple. Everything in the universe is just electromagnetic spirals. Everything. Atoms do it. Suns do it. 
Everything is doing it. Every atom in your body is doing it. It's just spiraling around and going electric, magnetic. Well, it's the other way around, actually. Electric goes like this in the cone. It gravitates and it contracts. Electricity contracts and then magnetism radiates. And that's it. You don't need any other, other explanations. There's nothing else to explain. That's how it works. And this explains it. This sine wave explains it. Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo. Now, I'm not going to go right into this because I've covered it at length. Please check out Mr. Astro Theology website and you'll have a ball with the information. You'll work all this stuff out. And uh, then the Red Sea. So you've got Libra, Scorpio, Sag, Cap, Aquarius and Pisces. These are the red months, the dreaded red winter months. Um, now, when you, bring this, when you bring this around, you can bring it around in, in itself like that, right? Here is uh, Sagittarius and here is Scorpio. See, so as the sun climbs up and conquers, comes into Jerusalem, that's Jerusalem. And it must be betrayed as Jesus is betrayed. All of a sudden in the Gospels, you know, there's all this good stuff happening. He collects all his 12 disciples. They go around <coughs> preaching the kingdom of the heavens and everything's great. And then all of a sudden Jesus starts saying, look out for the leaven of the Pharisees. Look out, they're going to betray me. I tell you, I will, betray, I will be betrayed. And he says to Peter, before the, uh, the cock crows three times, you will betray me. There's all this betrayal all of a sudden. That's the betrayal. Down, waning sun dies. And Scorpio is Judas Iscariot. The backbiter. Scorpions bite with their back. And they leave, when they bite, when they bite, they leave a kiss mark that resembles the kiss of a human being, you see, the lips. So Judas, in, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Sagittarius, yeah, the kiss of death, betrays the sun. Because the sun is being betrayed here at sunset or winter, and it goes down to die. And guess who's there? Who are the characters in, in all right, so it's easy. If you've, if you've seen Mel Gibson's The Passion of Christ, you'll know that who was in the Garden of Gethsemane? The devil, remember that? Whispering in his ear. There was Peter, and there was Judas Iscariot. They're the three main players. Well, there's Judas Iscariot. Sagittarius is ruled by Jew, Peter, and the devil is, um, wouldn't Draco be one of the uh, extra zodiacal signs of the sign of Sagittarius? Yeah, that's where the dragon is, the devil is there. And the devil hands over the sun to Saturn, Saturn, Aquarius and Capricorn. Saturn takes over. In this quadrant, there's no fire. See, there's fire here in Aries, cardinal fire, fire fixed over here. And Sagittarius is the last of the fire. This man, Mr. Cold, kills the sun at winter. That's winter. It's all science. All of it. Let's continue on with a few uh, thoughts that I didn't tidy up in the first half, okay? So thanks to Daniel, he pointed out the fact that I didn't uh, explain about the Eskimos and the stars changing, <coughs> moving. Now, I know for a fact that they've changed, they've moved. I know that because I can see it. I can see the sun is ap actually shifted more, setting more towards, um, towards the, uh, the south. It's migrated. Whether that means, yeah, to the south, what I mean is this, okay? From my house, I see the sunset. And in the southern hemisphere, this is the summer sun. This, this, this is the, uh, when, when December comes along, <coughs> that day there, in the northern hemisphere, it happens over there, all right? This is the north, this is the south, and this is the middle, east and west here in the middle. So there's 47 degrees, whoops, 
47 degrees from here to here, from solstice to solstice, because 23 and a half degrees there, 23, you add those together, you get 47 degrees. So I watch from my house in Narry Warren, I'm sort of at the end of the Dandenong Ranges, so I'm pretty elevated. I've got a deck and I watch the sun. There's, there's a house next door that blocks all of that, all of the winter, autumn winter stuff, but I see the sun <coughs> doing that. It's beautiful and it just goes, there's West, Westgate shopping centres around about here, it just about touches Westgate and then, and then goes back and then it, for six months I can't see it setting in the winter. And of course, in our southern hemisphere, the sun sets forward slash. In the northern hemisphere, it sets that way, right? I found this out when I went to Los Angeles in 2001, and I'm on uh, Santa Monica uh, Beach there, and I'm looking at the sun setting, and I'm going, whoo. <laughs> and, and of course, I've prided myself in knowing astronomy and knowing the stars, you know, I can tell you where Orion is and everything like that, and there I'm, whoops. Aha, uh -huh, of course, I'm in the northern hemisphere, the sun's going to be setting like that, not like this. All right? <laughs> because we're in the south. So we, we see the sun from, from the south, right? We're from here, setting that way. But in the northern hemisphere, it sets the other way. So anyway, um, I know that it's moved. I, I'm, I, yet, I, I don't know how much it's moved yet because I've got to wait till the 21st of December comes to see. I've got a marker. My son's school, uh, Baringa State School, there's a, there's a roof and the sun goes to the edge of the roof and then it goes back. So I'm gonna I'm gonna mark it, but I know already it's it's advanced. It's out. Are you talking about a pole shift? I don't know whether it's a pole shift or a plane shift, because our solar system has a plane, right? There's the sun, and our Earth is about seven and a half degrees on you know, like off the plane. It doesn't right? So I don't know whether it's this. Someone said that it was a plane, the shift of the plane has done it. But but I know for a fact, right, by reading guys like Walter Russell, another guy you want to read is Keshava Bahat, the Indian guy who died about 20 years ago. And he was the one that's teaching that our solar system is in a vortex. There's the sun at the apex. This guy agrees. And then the planets conically orbit like this. There's Mercury, Venus, the Earth, conically. So one part of the orbit will be fast, one will be slow. In fact, this is the slow part. This is the fast part. That's why Marcus Manilius says the bull and the twins and the crab rise upside down because, it's, because this part is slower and this part is fast. 187 days, 178 days. There's a book that really explains that well. It's called The Round Art by A.T. Man. The which? The Round Art by A.T. Man. Right. Yeah. And that Good. explains that really well. Yeah, so they, it, it's conical and, and they're elliptical. Have to be. If they're in a cone, it's elliptical. So does that answer your question about the, uh, the stars and the Eskimos? Because the Eskimos were saying, clearly they're saying, the, the stars have moved. The heavens have moved. And you hear them one by one from different tribes in their native tongue. You can't understand it but for the subtitles. And uh, they're explaining that they are they have watched the stars all their lives and they've moved. Oh, I've seen that too. That's and this hard to believe. Yeah, well, there's... And that happened just all of a sudden. Well, because, as I said, as I said it takes 2,160,000 years for the, pot, the axis to migrate 360 degrees. All planets do it. Uranus at the moment is sitting on about 87 degrees. That's where we get our ice ages from. Of course. We get our ice ages, every part of the earth has been in an ice age. When they discovered the mammoths in Siberia, they said, hey, this was a tropical lush forest. And we've got maps of the Sahara where Egypt was full of palm trees and tropical vegetation. The whole earth, as it goes around every two million years and brings back a wave of human consciousness, the return of the Christ, we've been doing this for millions of years. This guy says for millions of years we've been on this earth doing that. And, and, and when the ice age comes, it, kill, it kills off man. And then man comes back. And there's waves of this. The, the pyramids, I mean, there's uh, 
guys like Robert Schock and uh, John Anthony West and <coughs> Schwala de Lubitz and um, Gerald Massey and all these great scholars that have exposed well, in modern times, you've got Graham Hancock and Robert Bouval and these types. They're exposing that, that the Sphinx is at least 12,000 years old, at least 12,000 years old. You go to university and get educated and they'll tell you that it all, it's all fits in the model. But, but, but to say that the stars have shifted, that, that's a big thing. Well, they absolutely have. Come out in any yeah. other. Well, this is it. Denial, 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 denial. There's no disclosure with the corporate governments. It's just that river in Egypt, you know? Yeah. Isn't there a lot of amateur astronomers out there? Well, there's a lot of guys with their handheld cameras that are going, um, <coughs> I'm focused on the sun setting, and it's setting over here, and it was setting over there last year. What's going on? Uh, there's tens of these on YouTube. I don't look at them anymore because it's a fact. That happened in our autumn earlier this year. The sun was about, um, I live in Thornbury, and when I'm looking east when the sun's rising, the sun usually comes up around about um, directly across from me. Um, but this time, <coughs> I'm more in Northcote, which was a little bit more south um, the next morning. But then the next day, it was back to its normal position. So I don't know what was going Actually, on there. Yeah. People are filming objects too, circling the moon and stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the sun. Yeah. And, the sun. yeah, and they're there. They're there. Ellenon and all these Honda and Levy, they're there. Yeah. We may not see them. You don't normally see the comets. There's hundreds of comets, you know, coming in and, and the sun just consumes them. They crash into you see those visions of the comets landing into the sun and the sun just absorbs it. Because, as Wallace Thornhill explains, that the sun is being energised from without, not from within. It's not a hydrogen super bomb that crushes hydrogen atoms at its core and then helium comes from that and, 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 and then it's going to burn out one day. It's, it's gathering all its electrical force from the currents out there called Birkeland currents. We right? Get sunspots too. Yes. Yeah. There's no actually nuclear fission happening in the sun. No. Yeah. There's, There's none. There. There's none. But these models continue to be spewed out of our universities to keep us stupid. So we can't think for ourselves and have direct knowledge. Because once you know the solar system works, it's all over. That is the system of the solar system. And what happens is the planets, as our Earth was where Mercury was once, and it was as small as Mercury. Now it's bigger because it's out here, because the orbits slow down and the rotation speeds up. So that, you know, there's not an imbalance. Because if, 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 if it didn't speed up in its rotation but slowed down in its orbit, pew, yeah. it just flies off, all right? And then it becomes a sun when it, when it goes away from its primary. See, as Walter Russell explains, the sun is emitting its planets from its rings, from the equator. The planets come from that. They shoot off. And our sun has come from Sirius. It's binary. It's mother, Isis. Sirius is the mother of our sun, Jesus. That's why in Egypt, Egypt they have Isis nursing si Jesus. It's our star system. They knew about it. Everything there is science. And when you realise that, that that spin of the Earth is um, anti-clockwise spin of the Earth is increasing in its spin, you understand where the earthquakes and tsunamis and what have you are coming from. They'll always be there. See, because if our Earth was like that, and now it's like that, well, that curvature there is a lot more uh, concave than this curvature here, isn't it? So if the Earth is expanding, that means the crust of the earth must be straightening. That would account for Japan and Christchurch and all of that. It's just the crust straightening up because it's expanding. It's mother, mother Earth's just doing what she does. But see, what they do is they see the effect and they say, oh, the earthquakes are causing the tilt. So people get, get scared because they think it's unnatural for the tilt to be straightening up. It should stay at 23 and a half degrees forever, shouldn't it? That's what we're being told. And they know, they know the truth. Mark my word, they know the truth, man. They know it. They're just keeping lies out there, spewing it, until their, their corporations cease to exist by the economy crashing. Once that Rothschild Federal Reserve money runs out, you'll see how everything runs out. Wars, bloodshed, corporations, and all of the bullshit will... We need to pray <laughs> and wish and hope that the economy crashes, really. Sorry. Um, what about this whole Ellenin story about each alignment and what it does 
does that have any effect or is LNN something that we, we should look at there while not looking where we should be? Well, I reckon it's been, it's been proven that we've had earthquakes and, and stuff with alignments of LNN coming in. I reckon it has. But look, when you understand that we are co-creators and we know that we've had destructions in the past because Herodotus wrote about it, the Egyptians, Barossus, Manetho and all these guys, they wrote about it. We know that. It doesn't mean we're going to have to repeat that in the future. We are co-creators. We are much more conscious than we've ever been. And uh, we have a part in softening the blows that are coming. I believe that, but belief is not direct knowing. Okay? Direct knowing is let's wait and see what happens. But in the meantime, well, what a way to go if a tsunami comes and wipes us off. It's better than dying of cancer or dying of depression or dying of going to war fighting for George Bush or whatever other way you die on this planet. If the solar system says, man, I'm going to give you a show, man, in 2012 and I'm going to bring in a comet and I'm going to do this and that, I'm all for it, man. I'm happy to shed this flesh and go back to cause because the soul and the spirit is immortal. The body is mortal. It's only a vehicle. I mean, I came in my Mitsubishi to, to this place. I'm not attached to it. It just got me here. And this vehicle is just getting us to some place we're going to be from A. And it doesn't matter what, what is coming. There's no need to be fearful anyway. What, what, you know, we've had a good life. We've lived and we know who we are. And so let's, I mean, imagine if a baby in the womb of its mother started panicking and saying, oh, God damn, I don't want to get out of this water of my mum's womb. I'm so comfortable. I'll have to start thinking and getting a job out there. And I don't know what the third dimension's like. I don't know what it's like to breathe air. I'm staying in here. I'm scared, you know. You just, we're being born. We're being reborn. And uh, as Gamaliel said to Jesus, unless one is born again, one cannot enter into the kingdom of the heavens, the stars, whence we came. Cancer, Saturn, it's all there. The story's all there. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention, which I forgot to, was, is a real choice little bit. Remember I said the wolf is here, lupus, and over here you have Perseus. Well, guess where the hunter is? The hunter who saves Little Red Riding Hood. Well, Orion, here. <laughs> There's the hunter. He's known as the hunter because he's killing the bull. Right? And then when you understand the Kabbalistic man, Adam Kadmon, and you know that the head is here, you start to ask yourself, ah, wow. Uh -huh. So you've got Orion killing the bull. That would be the left brain killing the right brain. And in fact, that's what Manly P. Hall says in one of his books that I haven't brought along, but quoting the, the uh, occultists and the spiritual wise masters who know the meaning of all things because they know this, says that's what it means. Cain killing Abel. This guy wants to be the boss. He's a boy. He's electric, he's powerful, and he's got brute force. This one's got compassion, and this one has got intuition, the sixth sense. This is five sense stuff. Ooh, I believe it when I see it. I want to see that effect. Don't give me any cause. Right? That's what this brain does. And it goes out and fights war with this hand, which is controlled by the left brain. You know? Marshall. It's all patriarchal. Whenever you see an organisation that has a CEO at the top of it, run for your life. <laughs> because it has been hijacked and overtaken by Rothschild money, man. Because they're behind the whole lot of it. The whole lot of it. Now, let's just go back to law, because that's what you asked, and I was going to... Um, because this is very, very powerful. Um, Franco Collins, who I told, who I... Uh, um, keep referring to, but I'd, I'd like to plug Dean Clifford because his remedies are far more simple. I love Franco Collins, but my God, it's complicated and I'm probably sending you down the wrong path. But I don't want to say that because if you're good with studying and you really want to work stuff out, go to Franco Collins, man, because he has done a lot of research. And most of the stuff I'm getting comes from him, especially this. Pig pens and pills. That's how the system works, guys. All right? I hope I don't m misspell here. That's a D <laughs> when I'm uh, in a hurry. Uh, privileged. 
I keep saying when I see my presentations, next time I'm going to write better, I'm going to take more time to write, but I realise why I write so fast, because it's just so much information. Anyway, privileged international, international government prison estate national system private international ledge ledge e yeah. legislative law that's the system that the elites are running man we are in prison it's a prison state nation system and they give us pills oh yeah lots of them but the privileged international government you've got all types here you've got you know rich the uh, the uh, industrialists the elite families and the monarchies and all these people they that's their that's their mob and this is what they administer they administer this now check out franco collins Franco Collins's last audio files on uh, talkshoe.com. You can get to it via my Universal Truth School website. And if you get lost, just contact me. But check out his latest audio files. They are so powerful. His last four or five are better than all the other 20 that are on there. And I've done them all. I've, read, I've, read, I've gone over them over, over and over and over. Now I'm on to Dean Clifford, and I'll tell you what, that guy is on the money. Once you study his stuff, Ain't no turning back. You know who you are. See your passport. P-type. P. Pauper. We are paupers. That's their assumption. That's their presumption in this system where they tell us to register our birth certificates in a ward because we're wards of the state. Um, it says here, the Governor General of the Commonwealth of Australia being the representative in Australia of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, requests all those whom it may concern to allow the bearer to pass freely without let or hindrance and to afford him or her every assistance and protection of which he or she may stand in need. Why would you need that anyway if you're free, right? You get a license, they give you a license to drive. Well, that's commercial. Who said we're not allowed to travel? I mean, I want to go from A to B, I'll go to A to B. Whether I have to get in a car or a tractor or an aeroplane, I'll find a way, but I don't need a license to do that. Travelling is your right. That's what the passport asserts. But that's what they do when they, they, they pull you over and they say, yeah, can I see your licence, please? What do you do? I've said no. I've gone down that path and succeeded depending on the policeman, depending on their attitude, right? Because if they're going to just pull out a taser and, you know, just zap you with it, well, it's not worth it. But, you know, if they give you a fine, just give me the fine, get the hell out of here, mate. Just, yeah. I'm nice to them, usually. Sometimes I'm, I'm not, but um, I just say, just do what you have to do because I'll deal with the paperwork anyway by writing the, the, the necessary letters. Telling, writing them and telling them that I don't need their services, thank you very much, and do not I contact them. I started by refusing them. Don't even look at them. Just, you know, you can return to sender. Return to sender. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a joke. It's a joke. The, the, the expression that uh, Dean Clifford teaches, by whose authority do you use that name as personal identification? When you go to court, they're bringing you in, they're summonsing your name, your corporation. So they are making, that's very, very, very presumptuous of them because they're assuming that you don't know that you are the sole beneficiary and shareholder of your trust. So unless you rebut that, they're going to send you to prison, they're going to fine you, they're going to do whatever, whatever they want. So you need to let them know soon enough. I'm here by special appearance. Uh, and to uh, have the case dismissed against my corporate name. Uh, who's, who in this courtroom is um, in breach of trust? I've also had the idea of <coughs> summoning them to my place for a hearing. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Do what you feel, man. Yeah, you come to my place.
can talk there. You come to my place, man. We'll talk there. Um, look, there's a lot of information that I can go into here. Okay? There's a lot. But I really think you'd be served better by listening to Dean Clifford. Please do it. Do you remember that... Um, uh, those trusts that I put up, those trusts apply around the world, man, through the UN, through the Rothschilds uh, Geneva Convention and all of those conventions that, you know, make us free. Um, they're all Sestwi KV trusts. Sestwi KV trust, those, those were three trusts. You see, look, this is how it works. There's, there's the Pope, Pope Boniface, that's his tombstone. And he was the one that first wore the, the double crown and then the triple papal crown came along. And that is the tiara or the trirenium, the three kingdoms, the three trusts. Steal your property, steal your, uh, your um, real estate, steal your personal property, steal your souls. They are the harvesters of souls. Because how it works, it, it works on the sacrament of penance and indulgences. You're a sinner. You're a sinner born a sinner, but you've got some credits with this gracious God in the heavens. And we are here as God's agents. None of you going straight to God and having a relationship with your spiritual father yourself. No, they've inserted themselves in the place of God, right? And so they're going to administer your sins, man. They're going to bring you in for a hearing. Excuse me, father, for I have sinned. And we go. What's the deal with, with the Mormons when every person who dies in the planet I've seen, they get the name and they do some special ritual? Yeah. What's that about? You can rest assured that it's shonky. Yeah. I don't know what it's all about. Why do they have everybody's name under those vaults, yeah. under those mountains in Utah? They've got no right. They're presumptuous. They're all presumptuous. Yeah. They're presumptuous. The monarchies are presumptuous because they've got blue blood. Well, if you want to find the best blood on the planet, prick yourself on the thumb with a needle and look at that blood because that's the best blood that there is. It's in your body. Yeah, it's not in, 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 in Prince William poncing around you know, and all these fools that go and adore him. Oh, Prince Elwood, Prince Elwood. Well, <laughs> Do they know, if I could tell those poor blind people how many people that he stands for that he's murdered. He's murdered. They are the murderous most murderous family together with the Rothschilds in history. Their business is murder since Hudson Bay and, and East India Company when they were pirating the seas. They're pirates. They are filthy, rotten, dirty, criminal pirates that torture us when we start to think. See, the inquisitional officers, they haven't gone away and they tell you, they tell you there's a sheriff in New South Wales. I tell you that they're serving the cross, the Christ, the Antichrist. Catholicism and all its prostitute little whore Protestant uh, organisations that are incorporated, that sit under the, the skirts of the uh, blood-stained mother whore Babylon the Great, which is the Catholic Church, they all are corporations that, that pay massive amounts of royalty to the mother whore in the Vatican. And uh, they come to you, these officers of the Inquisition, to summons you to their hearings. I've shown these pictures before. That's the army of the Vatican in the 1500s, 200 ships. That was uh, painted by Giorgio Vasari in Naples, the Bay of Naples. What's the Pope doing with 200 military ships going on a crusade against the Turks? I wonder if that's just a small portion of how many young men are on manning those boats, man? How much bloodshed is there? How much genetic pool was lost in those days? There's the Pope. There's a photo that you don't want to, wouldn't want you to see. There's the Pope blessing the army in Italy. Go, brothers, go. Shed blood for God. Shed. Shed blood for God. And there's Christopher Columbus. That's a famous painting. You can see many of these paintings. There's the cross. The Dominicans were with him. The Dominicanis means the Lords. The Dominicans, nice bunch of people. Dominican, Dominus, Lord. Cain, canine. 
the dogs of the Lord, mate. They'll kill you. They will slit your throat. Just like Julian the Emperor, 40 years after Constantine said, those Christians, they are slit throats. He was saying it back then, man. Porphyry busted them in the third century. Celsus busted them. If you read this, you will know who they are, these people, these literalist Christians. You'll know who they are. He says they're buffoons that go to the marketplaces, stand on their soapboxes and preach the Gospels that they don't understand. And they try and seduce widows and, and orphans. But as soon as an intellectual comes, they're off. They've gone a runner. And I remember that when I was a Jehovah's Witness. When you, start, when you come across an intellectual, you, you sort of excuse yourself. For, uh, well, I've got to go now. And, you, because, and then you talk to, you, you, you know, you usually go in twos when you're witnessing, you know. Oh, yes, we've, we've been trained to go looking for the meek and teachable. We're not going to waste our times with these intellectuals. <laughs> yeah. If these people repent and turn around, which is what it's all about. Repentance is when you've, you know, when you've come down and done your time at the hex. <coughs> The, the hex, right? Six, six, six. Six protons, six neutrons, six electrons. We've all, we are all carbon organisms. It's a hex. We've been hexed. Okay? When you flat pack a hex, you get the, the cross. That's the cross of matter that we've been hexed with. It's, not, it's no one's fault. And besides, it's been the age of Pisces. So those poor deluded priests haven't got any much consciousness either to work with. We're all lost in loss of consciousness, but it's coming back. And the thing is, there's only a, a short window of time left before that people really <coughs> need to get it right before these big changes come and we benefit from them. Because if we don't, we miss the boat for another, possibly, I don't know, 24,000 years, another cycle of necessity. And we can, uh, you know, stop the hemorrhaging and save some people and, into the, the, the awakening that's, that's happening. Anyway, these are the people who uh, run the show, the, temp the Temple Bar. That's their holiest of holy temple. It sits on land which has no title. They own it outright. It's the only piece of land on this planet that the Catholic doesn't claim as its own. So they run amok. They are the private guilds that are administering, administering the justice, so-called justice, in our courts. The Church of Saturn, the priests of Baal. In the square mile of London, this is the place where all sorts of crimes are thought up and administered to the uh, proletariat sleeping plebeian masses. According to them, is that the, city of London? the city of London, together with the, uh, the Vatican and the city or the state of Washington, D.C., the three cities run the show. This needs to be checked out. It's amazing. And this one. The money masters. This is powerful and it shows you how money is doing this. That's their system. That's how they run it, the pyramid. Climb that ladder, like John Lennon said in Working Class Hero. There's plenty of room at the top, still, as long as you learn how to smile when you kill. Come to the top, man. You can be the CEO. Just leave your kids at home. You know, wake up six o'clock when that alarm, when that Roman calendar alarm bell rings at six o'clock, and you go and you've got a job. Job equals slavery. That's what it equals. All we need is to eat in here. That's all we need to be happy on this planet. A few clothes, some shelter. That's all you need. We don't need the new laptops. We don't need the new car. We don't need all those gizmos and things that they're making for us and enslaving us. These people certainly can't get it. And uh, you just kind of wonder whether these people have been introduced to these people yet. It seems that they uh, haven't because these people are still looking for food and these people have got plenty of food. So yes, it's negative, but it's a fact of life. Anyway, look, so let's get some uh, really balance it now with some good things because I'm sure that most of the presentation was dealing on on uh, positive things and how we can uh, overcome this situation okay we need to reclaim dominion by taking control of that trust the trust is there and we can do that in a very very simple way writing to the Attorney General and telling that that you've arrived on the scene and you no longer need their services 
to administer that trust. It's breach of trust for them to do it anyway. They're getting away with it because we don't know about it. It hurts when you, when you understand what's going on in this world. It needs to be fixed. We want a better world. We all want love and peace and justice and all those beautiful things we can go and visit each other and play our musical instruments and drink tea and love life and all the beautiful different people, black and white and tall and skinny and everything. We're all here, you know, and we have to be divided by these. Look, um, the historicity of Christ Jesus, it needs to be addressed because, again, the presumptions, it looks like he existed. There's a calendar based on him, supposedly, um, which I will dis dis dismantle with a few quotes from this book. George Robert Stowe Mead, talking about the uh, Gnostic Christians, the true Christians, because Christianity is, is the universal religion, you see. All the stars, they do a crisscross. And that is ki ro. They all do this from solstice to solstice. And that's the equinox. That's all it is. That's Christ. Christo, crisscross, crisscross. The sun crisscrosses. Therefore, Christianity is our natural religion. It's been hijacked and counterfeited and shoved down our throats as a fiction. And we believe that it's a real religion because, oh, the beautiful, beautiful words of Christ Jesus in red in the King James Version. I mean, do unto others as you, have, do, as you want people to do to you. Love God, love your neighbour. You know, um, don't be belligerent. Uh, it's just, it's words of wisdom, but it's words not from a historical person. They are words of the Logos. You see, there's the Logos, the Ethos, the Mythos, the Pathos. The Logos is the Word of God, the Word of the mind. The mind of God is 12-fold. See, 12 and 7 are the perennial numbers that you'll see in the Holy Scriptures. 7 is matter, physical matter. 7 chakras, 7 colours of the rainbow, 7 everything else. 12 is mental. The universe is mind. The mind thinks and sets forth in motion what we call matter. Sevenfold matter. That's the soul of Mother Nature. So you've got Mother Nature and Father. They're there. You see? These, these are male and these are female. They're the four rivers that come out of the Garden of Eden. The waters above and the waters below. When you get hydrogen, these, these fellows here are made up of hydrogen mostly, are they not? It's flammable, is it? Isn't it? And then what's air mostly? Oxygen. I know, I've got, I've, I know I've got nitrogen here and I've got hydrogen down here, but, but this still applies. Because these are the waters above and these are the waters below in the Bible, in Genesis. When you get hydrogen and oxygen, H2O, two of hydrogen and one of oxygen, you get water, which is the waters below. And this is, this is a compound and this is a molecule. It's more condensed water. That's all it is. Water, 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 water. The water's above and the water's below. And these are masculine and they burn. When they combine, they flip polarity, become negative, and they're water. And out of water springs forth generation. This is the generative world down here. The atom and the molecule. You can study these fours forever. There's four in everything. Four, 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 four. In fact, I went to the internet the other day and I thought, I'll, 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 look, I'll read about the fours and I'll find an article so that when I do my presentation, I can show people that the fours are everywhere, everything. It's that great number of solidity. And I just pulled up the first page that was on Google and uh, I'll read it to you. One of the building blocks of Jewish time, space, and soul is fourness. Oh yeah, they love that number. And they say that seven is the, the most wonderful thing that God created. Mind over matter. The twelve over the seven. And they said there's nothing more great in the eyes of God than the number seven. There are four letters of God's name. yod He vah -He. Jehovah. yod He vah -He. There are four letters of God's name, four matriarchs, four promises of liberation, four cups at the Passover, cedar, 
four prayers, prayer times that span the Sabbath, four mystical worlds of being, four guardian angels, and according to some, four layers of the spirit. On a more mis physical level, there are four elements, four winds, four seasons, four phases of the moon, four directions. There are four corners of the ritual garment called talit, four species of plants gathered together for the ritual bundle called the yulav. The four poles to hold up the Jewish wedding canopy known as the chuppa. I think I hope I said that right. There are four ways of interpreting Torah, Peshat, Drash, Remez and Sod. I've explained this in one of my other videos that the Bible is, has four layers. And they're saying here, paradise, the word paradise, paradise, you've got uh, the top level, the bottom level is um, pshat, uh, drash, where you get the midrash of the Jews, midrash, uh, remez, and sod, that's the literal version that you teach 12 year olds. That's the one that you say, oh Jesus was man. Because you're teaching them like you put training wheels on a bike so that they grasp the stories. You know, you talk about Humpty Dumpty, give them the moral of the story. Little Red Riding Hood, give them the moral of the story. Children learn in this way. They see the beautiful images and the symbolisms clearly. But when you get, you know, like past 12, you're supposed to sort of introduce the allegory and explain to them, well, Jesus, that man that we said was, you know, man, a good man, well, it's, it's, it's the son of God, the S-U-N, it's the son of God. Anyway, and this is the mystical, spiritual mystical, okay, allegory. Uh, there are four, the plain meaning, oh, so, well, it says it here, hang on, uh, uh, so pshat, drash, remez, and sod, the plain meaning, the allegorical meaning, the interpretive meaning, and the mystical meaning. This is the one they give to 40-year-olds, no one under 40 years of age, because it sends them loopy. That's what they say, the Jews. And that's, that's, that's the Zohar and the Sefer Yetzirah and Kabbalah. There are four rivers in the Garden of Eden. Fourness reflects the ages of human experience, youth, maturity gener and generativity, reaching one's full power in midlife and the challenges and joys of old age. The Jewish world tree, the Yetz Chaim, or tree of life, passes through four levels of ex existence on its way between heaven and earth. Each of these fours divide the world into multiple aspects. The elements are earth, water, air, and fire. The worlds are As Asaya, Yetzirah, Beriah, and Atzilut. Doing, feeling, thinking, and existing. It goes on and on. Should I read more? I mean, it's beautiful, but uh, I'm labouring the point really now. There's four, four limbs, four blood types, four Hippocratic humours. So, you know, it goes on and on and on and on. And it's up to us to see the sacredness of these numbers. They're sacred. One is sacred. One is the whole, the universe. It's all one. The cause is one. It's just, it's one, but it's twelve. Because you see, ether is twelve. So the one is 12 because this is how the electromagnetic pulse works it works it works in Walter Russell explains that there are four polarities not two and those two uh, yet undefined polarities is what's getting scientists all confused because they only see the two electric and magnetic they don't realise that there are four polarities. See, he talks about the pulling this way of the wave. You know, the stretching out of the waves and the length. And then there's the, another pull that tries to give it amplitude. So the one, which is 12. Now, you're not confused, right? Because that makes sense. The mind is a dodec... Is a, the universe is mind. And as it works upon the, the, the motion of the atoms, it creates material forms. It becomes two, the good and the evil. Okay? Now, I've, I've done this many, many times in my presentations. When you, um, when you do the Earth and then you do that and then you do the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn and you put the sine wave in there. Oh, well, it should sort of do that, really. Um, 
Well, this is good, right? Good. You take one zero out, you've got God, and you can live here. The opposite of live is evil, and that's down here, where the devil is. Same word. You see, the science, the religion that we've been indoctrinated with is really just science. Knowledge and wisdom. And nature unfolds herself and teaches us once we find the key. This is the key. That's why they go after it so badly. They want you to believe from the church's perspective that astrology is from the devil and the uh, intellectuals and the sophists will tell you that it's a pseudoscience. I, I, I love it when people, and they're quite smart, the people who say this to me, you know, it's, oh yeah, oh, astrology, it's a pseudoscience. Santos, it's a pseudoscience. And I'm like, uh, should I or shouldn't I? You know, do I need to just walk away from bothering to explain it or try and help this person? So I've got to make the decision on the split moment. But if, if only, you know how you feel sometimes that you feel like if only you could just download this person who's not getting it with what you know and you could help them, but you can't because they don't want to listen. They don't, they're, they're out of there. There must be a simpler way though make one understand, I mean, the ones that are really closed. Yeah. Just a simple form. Yeah, there must be. Yeah. You sow seeds, so then you go... Yeah, that's it. That's what I... Yeah, sow the seeds. And yeah. the soil is really... Exactly. Healthy. Yeah. There's the four different types of soil. There's another four. Remember the, the parable of the sower? There's the rocky soil, there's the barren soil, there's the good soil, and then there's the other soil. I forget what it was, right? Yeah? So this is the soil. Some will will reap the harvest and uh, some will produce a hundredfold, some 60 and some 30. There's no use judging, there's no use saying, oh, look at me, I'm enlightened and oh, I can think all these wonderful things and everything like that. There's no use doing that because you've still got miles to go, and no matter how, you know. We do know everything, we're just remembering it. Plato said that we are experiencing the anamnesis, the remembering. We are remembering the members that are lost. You know, and, and doing this, coming here and learning this today, is going to help you remember a lot of stuff real quick. We're not evolving, actually. Going Exponentially. Back to where, yeah. Well, we devolve and evolve. Yeah, we're not evolving because we are going back to where mm. we're supposed to be. That's right. But devolution is right in the mix. Check out Michael Cremo's work. Okay? Devolution. It's... Um, so the, the, beauty, the beauty of wisdom is here. It's, it's, it's here where you can find this. Remember that the man or the woman, the, the human, because woman comes from man, doesn't it? Well, man, man, and it's man. We're men. It, it's a race of men. In fact, Adama, the Adamic race, remember ascendant, descendant, and um, meridian. That's Adam. That's the... the that other, that other A is in there, but you don't need to repeat it. But dam is red, or blood. And that's Edom. There's other names there in the Bible. Edom, Dom. We are the Adama. In Genesis it says, And man made, and God made man, and called him, called them, not him, them, Adama. It's a race. And it's a race of red blood. You see, we are going through the Red Sea, that's our blood. And Alvin Boyd Kuhn, um, the guy who I, I showed before, this guy has a, a small pamphlet called Your Blood is the Red Sea. And he shows there that in the, l the laboratory, your red blood is the same as ocean water. There's no difference, chemically. So we are going through the Red Sea, here we are trudging along, and we have Aries at the head and Pisces at the feet, as the wisdom shows. And my, you study this wheel and you will see that all the characters turn up at the right place. The Pleiades is six degrees Taurus, sitting right there. That's the jewel of the sky, the seven sisters. Well, I mean, the head... This is not in proportion, by the way. I mean, the torso comes down to Scorpio. The, the thighs... The thighs should be beginning here, okay? That's where the thighs should start there, okay? So this is not absolutely correct, but if the pineal gland is in 
Taurus, six degrees of Taurus, it's pretty much right there, isn't it? Would that be the pineal gland, I wonder? Because the theologians will tell you that, oh, the Alcyone, the brightest star of the Pleiades, is where God rules the universe. It's the throne of God. Charles Taze Russell, the founder of the Jehovah's Witnesses, says that. A lot of them said that because it is. It's the pineal gland. That rules the whole endocrine system. That's the ruler. That's God. That's heaven. And climbing the 33, 33 parts of, of the spine. So do entheogens help us unlock that? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's why they will tell you from the church, oh, you don't take mind-altering drugs. Well, what, did they, what was the Eucharist originally? The Eucharist that they gave you was the Amanita muscaria mushroom. Hello, you have an out-of-body experience and then you look at your body and you go, aha, I'm not my body. And then you wake up to the fact that you're spiritual and then you live a spiritual life. And how many doctors, great doctors, have used LSD to cure depression, suicidal tendencies, um, with one dose? One dose. Check out the uh, Pharmacratic Inquisition website of Jan Irvin in California where, he, where he's got all these doctors that have, he's interviewed. Doctors, great men who have cured people. They don't have to take all these... I don't even know what they're called, these antidepressants and things that they give you, right? One dose of LSD and they're cured forever, gone. Because what does it do? Well, it takes you back in your past and it shows you, it shows you all the things that you've done to, to damage yourself and other people have done and everything like that and you just shed them. Because if you see them, you shed them. DMT is naturally produced by your pineal gland, dimethyltryptamine. Now, um, a lot of people won't admit to it, you know, uh, Francis Crick discovered uh, the DNA on LSD. Um, you'll find that there's a few other types in there. I'm sure Einstein took something. I'm sure they all did. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci and uh, Michelangelo attribute their wisdom to the rue plant. A lot of the best deconstructionist writings in philosophy, I'm pretty sure, are influenced by They LSD. all did. They all did. Forget Timothy Leary and, uh, and, uh, and these guys that were promoting it in the, in the 60s. Um, it's been going on for thousands of years. That's why the animals, the deer, will just jump. They'll kill you for an Amanita muscaria mushroom because, man, they want to try what you're seeing. They want that consciousness because there are levels of consciousness. And some animals are, are locked into the lower levels, you know, the animals without a liver. Then, then you've got, you know, smarter ones like cats and dogs and horses and domesticated animals there partaking of a higher consciousness until they reach the human consciousness which is the Christ consciousness that's what it means when the Bible says and the Christ came in the flesh there's the flesh and you're all conversing and able to understand that's Christ that two-way consciousness which animals don't have animals don't sit there and go oh I shouldn't have done that to my master before that I barked at, barked at him and everything like that. I'll try and be a little bit more humble next time and I'll try and sort of get out of his way. They've got none of that reflective consciousness, have they? We have. That's the Christ, Christ consciousness. That's what it is. And now, with this new wave that's coming, oh, a lot more is going to be restored. A lot more of our psychic powers. So that when you walk around, people will feel your psychic powers. They'll just go, whoa, whew, that person's powerful. You walk into port court, I guarantee you the day will come if, if we have to get there where you just look at the judge and he'll know, whoa, 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 case dismissed. I don't want to touch this guy because he'll know that you know who you are. That's how much power we've got, guys. It's coming back. In the Gospel of Thomas, Jesus says, if thy eye be single, thy whole body will be full of love. So it's wow. a nutshell. Yes, yeah. Beautiful. Um, I always like to go back to this because this is the big myth buster, the big fiction buster, I should say. Um, wow, there's so much to be said here, guys. Oh, God. You look, at, um, you look at the nature of people. Now, um, I've bought one of the best astrological books that you, can, that you can find. Excuse me for one minute. I've showed you this, if you've been to one of my presentations or seen my videos, this book and how he's got snippets of uh, people and the various signs and shows the features. The features are there, unmistakable, unmistakable. 
Um, you know, you can look at your Capricorns and you can see the features. I guess people, just by their features. I guess, I guess the, the sign, sometimes I go by the fire. I can see the fire. And so I say, I've got to work out whether this is a Sagittarius, a Leo or an Aries. Then I look at the, see that's the three, the, the, the uh, triplicity of fire, Aries, Leo and Sagittarius for instance. These guys are cardinals, so you can see cardinality. I'm cardinal. <laughs> I ran. I'm a ram. I, I just, I never walk, my mum says. You, say, you always run. Well, know the planets. Mercury is always near the sun, is it not? So my sun is in my head. I'm Aaron. I was born on the 24th of March, so the sun is in the head. Definitely, it's here. So Mercury is nearby. Where is Mercury in my birth chart? It's in the feet. It's right here in Pisces. Mercury is here. Mercury can only be, can only be there. It can, it can be either in Taurus or in my feet. In my throat or in my feet. It's in my feet. That's what gives me that fast, the fast, the speed that I've got in my feet. Always running, never walking. I've seen that in many areas. I notice I say, you're Aaron. Okay, I'm try and guess where the Mercury is. Is it in the throat? Are they speaking fast? Because if it's here, they'll be... Or if it's here, they'll be thinking really, really quick. Got real... If you're an Aryan and you've got Mercury in the head, which most Aryans will have, whew, great. Great. They've got intellect and fire and intuition. So another way of guessing people is via the mutability. You can see mutable signs, the Geminis and the Virgos. You can just see it. They don't have this fixability, you know, like this, these fixed signs. They're just, they're so solid and, and fixed. They really are. These guys are directional, you know, your cardinal signs. They are directional. These guys, they say, go straight. These guys go up in direction. These go, guys go sideways. And these guys go, well, you know, diagonally, all sorts of ways. But that's how it's been explained. Um, and it all fits with the sine wave. You see, the sine wave is, is a little baby here and the angle of the sun's light at sunrise is very, very sharp. So these people get sharp rays of vibration penetrating them on the moment they're born. So if you're born in, you know, like March the 39th, you're going to be receiving very, very sharp angle of radia radiation from the sun. These guys get a real, real soft one, these Venetian type Venetian type Taurians, fixed earth, and their concern is material things because that's where the mouth is. So they're not in the, they're not like in the, you know, the fiery intellectual part. They're now concerned with the mouth and material things. It's a material sign. These guys, mutable air, well, that, the mutable air, well, fire in the mind, food in the mouth, earth, fixed food molecules. Mutable air geminis the lungs, the two lungs. <sighs> That's where air gets mutated, you know, becomes mutable, doesn't it? It turns into, it goes into the bloodstream and everything like that. Cancer is the water. That's the breast of the mother. That's the mother. In, and, and in the houses of astrological houses, you'll find that this sign has to do with you, the first sign, and it corresponds with Aries. Then your money house, the second house, because it's financial, it's dealing with money. Then you've got your brothers and short trips, because your brothers, the twins, rules the arms and the lungs. And then you've got um, cardinal, has to do with family, because the crab is like the mother. She collects things and brings them to herself, and it's the family, it's the house, right? Etc. Etc. This is how you can understand all things. It's all here. It's all here. Once you know what cardinal fire means as opposed to mutable fire. In nature, bang, cardinal, birth, growth, decay. So the fire, the fire part of the year, of course, begins here with spring or sunrise, and then it fixates over here. That's two to four in the afternoon, the hottest time of the day, in fixed fire, and the hottest time of the year in Leo, August, July, August. It's all on cue. And then, bang, it stops here with mutable fire. There's no more fire in this kingdom, in this quadrant. This is the killer of the sun. You see, when the, Jesus dies, it takes three days to be resurrected. This is the resurrection. Easter is the resurrection of the Christ. 
in the sign of the Lamb. These are three days where there's no fire for Jesus. The sun suffers in those months in, in January and February. It's cold. It's trying to grow. It's trying to grow and bring us back to the ph photosynthesis. But right on cue, everything is there. The spring months, the blossom. Pull your, pull your bull out and plough because then you can harvest. Twins, generation, lambs, goats, cancer. Sun reaches the peak, must come down, go sideways. Leo, the roar of the lion is the summer. The dog days start here, the dog days, when Sirius is behind the sun, because Sirius is over here, she rules. Our binary star dwells right here in the middle of Gemini and Cancer. And then when it's in the sun, around Leo, the dog days begin, because Sirius is the dog, Canis Major. So that's why they call them the dog days, the heat of the dog days, because the dog is behind the sun, and as the ancients said, it gives power and thrust to the sun. Anyway, I've been through that so many, many times. So, But um, what I want to do now, just uh, and, and finish off, is um, really, really address the... Um, the underpinning, the most in, important and vital and crucial part of underpinning this whole fiction, and that is the historical Jesus lie. It's a lie. And um, um, this is just one book I, I, I've chosen to, to, to read from here in exposing Josephus, Tacitus, oh, Tacitus talks about Jesus, Suetonius, and Pliny the Younger, okay? Just quickly, I only need five minutes to just absolutely shred the, this to bits in terms of validity, in terms of proving that Jesus lived, if you're going to quote such nonsense. Few Christians now place any reliance upon the evidence from Josephus. The early fathers made this Jew admit that Jesus was the Son of God. Of course, the admission was a forgery. De Quincey states, the passage is known to be a forgery by all men, not lunatics. Of one other supposed reference in Josephus, Canon Farrar says, this passage was early tampered with by the Christians. The same writer says of the third passage, respecting the third passage of Josephus, the only question is whether it be partly or entirely spurious. Lardner, the great English theologian, was the first man to prove that Josephus was a poor witness of Christ. And you'd have to think, really, Origen and all the first three centuries, there was not one apologist who was defending Christianity that quoted Josephus, and they could have, Origen could have said, ah, Josephus mentions Jesus, because he didn't. They put it in after. Eusebius and his buddies did that. The Jesuits have been counterfeiting history for hundreds of years, man. It's, it's all wrong. Um, Tacitus. Oh, Tacitus talks about Jesus, certainly. This is the big one. Tacitus is the big one. Well, his histories, that's his true work. Uh, but his annals, that's a forgery. And that's where he mentions Jesus. He doesn't mention Jesus here. Actually, he doesn't mention Jesus. He's, he mentions Crestus, who's not Jesus. And it's not saying that he did anything to prove that he did something. There's nothing. There's nothing there that says Jesus did anything. There's just mentions of Christians and mentions and just little brief... In fact, Suetonius, this is what Suetonius... They use this, mind you, right? This is supposed to be proof that Jesus lived. They always... They should stop, at least, they should stop quoting Suetonius because there's only three words. This is the sentence. Because the Jews of Rome caused continuous disturbances at the instigation of Crestus. You're going to go to court with that one? Jesus existed, look at that! It ain't going to work. Not in a real court. The quotation from Tacitus is an important one. The part of the passage which concerns us is something like this. They have their denomination from Christus, put to death by a criminal, as a criminal by Pontius Pilate during the reign of Tiberius. I wish to say in the first place that this passage is not in the history of Tacitus, known to the ancients, but in his annals, which is not quoted by an ancient writer. 
The annals of Tacitus were not known to be in existence until the year 1468. An English writer, Mr. Ross, has undertaken in an interesting volume to show that the annals were forged by an Italian, Bracciolini. I've got to leave it at that because I've got to tie, tidy up with what I promised I would, um, and that is... Now, please, there's, um, there's Dupuy, 200 years ago, exposed the solar, the solar story. Joseph Willis, forgery in Christianity. J.M. Robertson, pagan Christs. This one's the best. I wrote to this guy, and uh, he lives in somewhere in the UK. The pagan Christ. This one is the best. You read this, it's poetically dismantles the whole story like I've tried to achieve to do. Jordan Maxwell helped in this one. The church, the book your church doesn't want you to read. This is brilliant. The Dark Side of Christian History by Helen Elebre. Brilliant book. Jordan, uh, Michael Tassarian. Astrotheology. D.M. Murdoch. Christ in Egypt. Yes, Christ was in Egypt. I've proven it. <laughs> oh yeah. This one, Cursey Grave, Graves, remember, in the 1850s. This guy has actually revealed that the Flavians, Pisos, the Piso family, the most powerful family in history, is behind the whole lot of it. They made themselves Christ. They did. Vespasian did it. The father of Titus. He was the one that Tacitus says went around performing miracles and calling himself a god. And these guys are excellent too. Timothy Freak and Peter Gandhi. And they've got a series of books. Exquisite. Exquisite. Showing the, the, the truth behind all these gospels and, and, and myths and legends. Now, um, do we remember that image I showed you of Augustus with the crown of thorns? And... and uh, Churchgoers will say, oh, look, we live in the year 2011. That's from when Jesus was on the earth. Well, <clears throat> this, these are some, some, some writings that have been discovered about the, uh, the calendar, the calendar that started around about that time with Augustus. The providence which rules over all has filled this man. Now, a churchgoer will think, oh, that's got to be talking about Jesus but it's Augustus, with such gifts for the salvation of the world as designate him as saviour for us and for the coming generations. Of wars he will make an end and establish all things worthily. That is talking about Caesar Augustus, the man with the crown of thorns, the original, the one and only, and his uncle, adoptive uncle, Julius Caesar. Julius means the son, Caesar means Christ. Caesar, Tsar, Caesar, Christ. And that's what all they, the pharaohs were Christ. They were all Christ. Horace was Christ. It's the everlasting story. By his appearing are the hopes of our forefathers fulfilled. Not only has he surpassed the good deeds of earlier time, but it is impossible that one greater than he can ever appear. Here's another one. The birthday of God has brought into the world glad tidings that are bound upon him. These are what you call, um, what are they, epi epithets? Is that what they call them when they write these glorious uh, pontificating uh, um, praises and eulogies to fame? Epitaph. Thank you. I knew I was in epitaphs. That's, that's what they are, man. And, and what we've done is we've... The, 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 the forgerers of history have gone and sort of plucked these things and attributed them to a certain saviour that they, they need for subject, subjugating and, blind, and blinding the masses. This day has given the earth an entirely new aspect. The world would have gone to destruction had there not streamed forth from him who is now born a common blessing. <coughs> this is Augustus we're talking about, same person but easily attributed to the historical Jesus because it's the same 
what's the word again? What, what was that word? <laughs> yeah. Epitaph. Epitaph, yeah. Uh, rightly does he judge who recognises in this birthday the beginning of life and of all the, power, all the eye powers of life. Now is the time ended when men pitied themselves for being born. He must have been a great man. Alexander Del Mar wrote about it, how they worship that man. He's a murderer. Oh yeah, he brought peace to the world. 40 year peace, Pax Domini, but with murder. And the iron rod man, the Romans were fierce. I can go on, you can get the book that dismantles the whole story. We need to reclaim this false history and we need to reclaim such beautiful books as this, as, 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 as the Bible, and show how this is our best, the best of the best, the cream of the crop, but we need to understand it. Like Shakespeare, he used historical personages, but he was writing plays. He was not teaching history. This is the same. And as I said before, the dominant the dominant ruling power of the time will always pluck those mythologies from the skies and pull them down and, and attribute them to the, the ruling monarch of the time. The 18th dynasty, pharaonic dynasty, is absolutely probably the first ones to have done that. We've got uh, Amenhotep, Tuthmoses, Hatshepsut, Akhenaten, Tutankhamun and Nefertiti, all in that one dynasty. It's all there. All those people. And uh, um, people like uh, Ahmed Osman have proven that you'll find Moses, Abraham, Sarah, Jesus, David, all in that dynasty. Why? See, you have to understand that whilst th these people are not historical, they are still being pinned onto certain historical personages because that's what you do. Like Plutarch said, if Evermerus was doing it, the Greeks have always done it. Oh no, there's a tomb to Hercules just outside of Athens. He lived. You ask the, you know, the Greeks who don't understand and they'll tell you that Hercules was a man, but the, the, the learned ones will say, oh, Hercules is up in the skies. Thank you very much for listening. Time is up.